Good afternoon, Vigo's Court. Welcome on back to day two of the PlayStream tourney. How are you guys doing today? How are you today, Q? I am fantastic. What it do? What it do? It's Sunday. We've got six matchups, maybe seven if we happen to have to run it back in the grand finals here. And, uh, you know... It, I'm excited. We've got some good matchups here starting off in round two of our losers bracket. Um, you know, we're going to be seeing... Uh, sorry, I have to keep switching back and forth. Uh, we're going to be seeing Rebels versus Calamity in our first matchup here, which should be really good. I'm really excited to watch this. Season. These teams both played really well yesterday, so it should be exciting to watch today as well. Watch them. These guys know I don't have a killer, right? It's really excited. Very enthusiastic. You know, we love the... We love the enthusiasm. I'm trying to pick something. Hold on. Alright. So we had seen them as far as uh, last week, or not last week. Well, I almost said last week. Yesterday. Whoa. Yeah, I know. I mean, to be fair, yesterday we saw a Whoa. lot of good action. So, I mean, it felt like it was a week, uh, week's worth yeah. of stuff. Um, yeah, but yeah. Calamity got here... Uh, so Calamity fell in the first round to Frozo, who is actually in the winner's bracket round three now at this point. Frozo also beat Ruby Wolves. Um, but then they had a very impressive uh, performance against Jester line to move into uh, round two as far as the loser's bracket. And then when we talk about Rebels, um, they lost a uh, honestly a heartbreaking uh, comeback last night to the Pub Stompers in our last round matchup so i feel like both feel like they probably had to have a like a, a little bit of a point to prove you know calamity wanting to uh kind of keep the the momentum going rebels showing that maybe it was just a little bit of a fluke in the last trial uh and wanting to kind of get back in, into the get back into the win column you know yes i am uh not entirely sure who i'm rooting for here i mean well, I guess I both teams played really well yesterday, but I think I would kind of like to see Rebels maybe um, earn earn their way back back in, you know? Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can find uh, trust in Godly uh, to see if I can join on him here. Because uh, I got a full Survivor squad that's ready to roll, but uh, unfortunately that's not how this works here. Um, so yesterday we saw a very wide range of different killers and everything played, of course, of course, with the play stream event here the you guys, the viewers have control as far as what we've got going on. You can choose the map we're playing, the killer we're playing. You can put some extra, um, little spins on a thing as well. We saw some no mither gaming, whether it be a whole team. We've seen just a uh, particular player challenge with it. We saw killers having to look up at the sky for like 15, 30 seconds, crazy stuff like that to just kind of throw some curveballs and, uh, not only does it help boost up the prize pool for us here in uh, as far as supporting Vigo's court, but also since you are challenging the players directly, you're putting a little extra coin in their pocket too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you guys were not here yesterday, we are doing a play stream tournament. So you guys are able to influence how the games go, what killers are played, what maps we go to, different challenges like he was talking about. Um... And all of that money, not only can you support your favorite streamers um, or help your favorite streamers by, you know, giving the other teams really difficult challenges, you're also supporting our prize pool for next season. So if you guys want to um, help us with that, you know, feel free to go ahead and toss some challenges into, uh, into these games and make it really fun. Now... We saw a couple of ghost faces yesterday, which I know you were excited about. We saw the one, no mither. I think the second one, though, was after you had gotten off the desk, but it was more of like the traditional style. I think it was on Blood Lodge with having to use the stalk and stuff. Still doing really good, though. Um, I would love to see some more, um, whether it be ghost face. I think we saw the one, Michael. Yeah, we saw Scratched Mirror Michael, which was fun yesterday, Definitely. too. That was really fun, actually. Yeah, so it, it, that's the thing here, and it's like a lot of these players, we do have some players here who are uh, either newer to comp or coming back to comp, but we also have some people who have some like experience kind of currently in comp, comp DVD, but this is like a whole different rule set. It's a whole other curveball, and we've been getting so much like good feedback on it, so it's honestly been really fun to watch. Yeah, and I mean, this isn't the first time we've done like a play stream event, but I feel like this is the 
most fun one that we've had um so far so uh we've had a lot of really great um suggestions or well not suggestions we've, uh, redemptions for killers um we've gotten to some really fun maps uh i keep getting thrown every time somebody gets a challenge to look up i'm like what are we looking what at? are we doing what are we doing <laughs> what are we what is this yeah no just like this is a very nice night sky yes thank you for reminding us that that exists but why so when you look as far as the bracket itself we're about 57 percent um according to the 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 website i don't i'm not that good at math uh so Very we're exact right wow. yeah we're, about, we're a little over halfway through the tournament and we have already raised six hundred dollars for our prize pool here which is absolutely phenomenal y'all have been kicking some serious tail with that uh so big props to you guys also big props to our partner uh playstream helping us put it together uh because again this has been so much fun it's like it's just like we get to see so many one-off scenarios that we just never really get to see yeah it's definitely a very different format our scoring is also a little different too from like our normal comp season so if you guys are familiar with that and you don't really understand how we're doing our scoring make sure you type exclamation mark rules in chat because i'm not gonna explain it to you neither of you <laughs> um it's a little complicated uh it it's it's a lot more lenient than our normal um stuff but this is also a much more fun format so if you guys want to know how we're doing our scoring how it's different from regular season go ahead and check that out especially because this is not the last time we're going to be doing an event like this yeah i think the big thing to um understand when it comes to the scoring for the event is it's really all based it's not all based around it, but a lot of it's based around the play stream side of it right like you're getting points for your challenges com you're complete since it is uh there's more like challenges and stuff there's also we're throwing in things as far as like blood points uh being a qualifier for point you know uh kills versus eliminations versus just your simple like points per points in a trial stuff like that to kind of make it more about what we're here to see which is the play stream style of it right yeah yeah definitely um a lot more fun which is nice because, you know, I know calm can be stressful. So this is a chance for all of us to enjoy the day together. Right. And I think like the big thing, and I mean, we see, um, I mean, across comp, you'll see similar teams, whether it's the same roster, similar composition, maybe missing a couple people, different people switched out or whatever. But a lot of these players play, you know, comp almost every weekend. So to be able to switch it up and it's, you're still competing, but it's a different rule set. It's kind of like a, just a nice little breath of fresh air, I would imagine as well. Yeah, not not so much having to worry about like hook states or whatever. I mean, you still have to worry about, you know, you want to get eliminations and stuff because we do actually um, one of our scoring criteria is escapes versus um, kills. Uh, but like all the small stuff in between doesn't matter as much, you know, it doesn't matter how you get there. Um, you don't have to worry about a lot of the smaller details, so you can kind of just relax like do your thing have fun so was there anything at the end of the day when you left you're like man i would really like to see this killer or this map because i mean the people are listening and they can make it happen for you today shep i don't even know i don't even know yesterday was so fun um that i kind of trust like <laughs> I don't really need trust, to put, trust, trust, I, trust. I, I, I trust the vibes of chat. I feel like I really don't need to put anything out there because whatever they want to see is going to be a good time. Um, I, also, I got two Ghostface games out of yesterday. Like, I literally you feel like you got your cut them. out of it? Okay, I, that's got, fair. That's got, fair. Okay, okay, okay. I think I was going to ask for anything. Legion. I want a Legion game. You I know, like we, really did we see, did we see a Legion yesterday? Actually, Legion, I think, is one of the killers that we did not see yesterday. I wouldn't mind seeing a Legion. Um, I know that there's going to be quite a few people who will probably disagree. I would love to see us a, a, a Cenobite game. I'm a big fan. Um, I'd like to see a Cenobite game, actually. I wouldn't mind that. Also, though, I would love to see a game of the pig. Ooh, that would be fun. Yeah. Just because I think I think, I think you can have some fun with it. Have someone play the pig, but you know what? Maybe give them some help. Put them on RCPD. That way they can run, you know, VHS tape, roll set number two, um, and get a little bit of extra momentum as the pig in the beginning part of the game, right? 
I mean, I'm cruel like that. I, I would love to see it. You could even do that on Larry's. Larry's with a rule set number two. And uh, I actually think I like Larry's better. Sorry, I dropped something. I actually think I like Larry's better. Do you think we could do an extra challenge to challenge the piggy to do rule set number two VHS tape and then just do AFK piggy in front of one of the boxes? Would that be fun? I I be would good, find it absolutely but... hilarious, personally. Yeah, but then you're, like, hoping that they don't get screwed by RNG and that nobody needs that box. Yeah, you but you happen. could have it happen where multiple people need the box. Yeah, I just gotta hope you pick the right box. <laughs> yeah, like, do you all want to play a fucking game? <laughs> all, all of us together. Now we are all playing a guessing game. <laughs> I do think, though, um, I'm trying to remember. I don't think we saw an Oni yesterday. That's another one that I, I always like seeing oh, yeah. uh, come out, especially in comp. I mean, also, especially seeing, uh, we had seen a couple of times yesterday, people throw some challenges out to our survivors to all run no mither. So, I mean, if you want to do that while running an o Oni, I mean, you know, I'm here for it. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. I I feel like no mither against Oni is a little cruel. We could do no power Oni. See, but then that's where you do the no mither though, right? No power, yeah. have them run the glove. Everyone's always constantly bleeding. Oh, I am evil confirmed 100%. If you guys didn't know that already, you weren't here last season. I was going to say, listen, I, wait, we have learned through through the... Uh, the uh, um, the scrimmages of these that we had, you know, the exhibitions of play stream through season two. I've had some time to let the good old noggin work and figure out some fun ones, you know? Fun, quote unquote. Well, and I think it is the one of those things too, where it's like, hey, if I want to, maybe if I'm Calamity, right? And I want to give a, a, a foot up, maybe when the rebels are playing Survivor, that's when I throw the team no mither challenge out, right? Like it's, you're helping your teammate, but you're also challenging the other team, which is cool because, again, you're supporting the, the player because you, you, you're you challenging the players directly. So they're getting themselves a little bit of coin, uh, but then also helping uh, boost up that overall prize pool up there in that top right-hand corner. Right, right. There. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, once again, you guys, you can put in all sorts of really cool challenges. So they, uh, the links were put in chat. So maybe scroll up a little and you'll find them or, you know, go to the streams of the people playing. You can give them all sorts of fun challenges, um, support them, of course. And also anything that you guys donate to the players for challenges. Once they complete the challenge, PlayStream's actually been really great. They've partner with, partnered with us on this. Um... Play stream for every challenge completed will match that for our prize pool for next season. So you don't have to donate directly to us. Everything that you do to support our streamers and our players um, is still going to help support us as well. I'll go ahead and let them know again that we're ready to go. Leave my rebels alone. Listen, listen. I'm just saying that this, that's kind of where part of the fun can be, you know? Throw some challenges at the other team, you know? It's, uh, it's, it's all in good fun. That's what we're here for as far as with this style of tournament. Also, so keep in mind here, our first couple of, uh, our first couple of matchups that we're watching here are going to be very, very important. So we're going to be watching loser's bracket round two here in this matchup and the next one, which means for whoever loses these next, next matchups, they're done. The winners of those two will then be facing off in our third matchup uh, to figure out who will be moving on to face the loser of our winner's bracket final, which is Frozo and Pub Stop. Stop, stop, purse. Stop, stop, purse. Stop, purse. Yeah, I... I didn't want to say anything, but I noticed it yesterday. I was like, what is all? I think, like, Caffeine Dream is spelled wrong, too. I was like. It's okay. okay. It's fine. You know what? I'm illiterate, so I can't judge. Like, math, uh, English is hard. Math is hard, too. Hey, you know what, though? At least for us, um, when it comes to math, I remember when I was in school, teachers told me that we weren't always going to have a calculator in our pocket. 
And <laughs> that turned out to be a lie. So that worked out so really in our you. favor. So I got a phone. Yeah, thank yeah. God. I use I use my phone at work. <laughs> Cause I have to I have to calculate like our receipts by hand. Oh, that's tough. So I'm just like Yeah. Or like if we if we run cards, I have to calculate that by hand. So I'm like, ooh, good thing I've got a phone. Glad my teacher was wrong, because I'm <sighs> stupid as hell. So again, Chad, if y'all are wanting to know as far as how the scoring is going to be going down here, because uh, it is a little bit different than your typical uh, comp play, or even just, the, I shouldn't even just say comp play, even just your other tournaments and stuff that are, I mean, I, even if tournaments aren't comp, they're still comp, right? Because they're going to be, anyways, um, it's not your typical kind of comp DVD estimation point <laughs> rules and chat. Um, to kind of see as far as what we're dealing with here. It does look like we did not have a Mori um, challenge. Keeping in mind, actually, Mori challenge uh, can be done, but we haven't seen anyone actually do a Mori. I was going to say, did we actually... I know we had a couple of redemptions for Moris, but did we actually get one? Mm-mm. Hmm. I might have to go ask somebody for that later. However, I do see, and I don't know if it was maybe this game that's going to be it or the next, I do see that a piggy game was submitted. I didn't happen to see where the map was selected here for this map. They might have already had uh, done that before I had joined the lobby, so we'll have to uh, wait and see here. If I get to start my day off with some piggy, though, I'm, I'm going to be a happy cue. Well, let's go ahead and take another trip on back into the fog here. This one, though, is going to be Midwitch, and we're going to be seeing the Wraith, and we're going to be seeing Coxcomb Clapper with the all-seeing blood as well. This is dirty. I, yeah, this is, uh, ooh, Silent Bell. I hate this combination. <laughs> So, of course, with the Coxcomb Clapper, you're not going to get any sort of notification as far as when the Wraith is actually trying to get out of their cloak. Are we going to be able to see a body burn? Yes, we are. Nice play here by the Fang in order to be able to get the body burn. Helps you build a little bit of distance. And, of course, it also knocks Trust and Godly out of that power. So, they have to get into that power again before they get to that 6.0, 6 meters per second uh, movement speed. Yeah, that body burn is uh, really punishing. So it looks like Justin Godley is going to go elsewhere in search of is someone else to play with. But that all-seeing is going to let him know exactly where to find someone, like, immediately. Yeah, the all-seeing will allow you to see eight meters while you're cloaked. So it's not like it's it, it's not quite like the range that you see, like, when Mikey's in a scratched mirror like we saw yesterday. But it is still a nice little uh, tool, especially on Midwitch when you're going through the hallways. There's plenty of places where people can hide, kind of tuck behind desks and things. And, and it's interesting because we saw the one hit onto Dabs, but then we're taking Chase here with the Ace, who is still fully healthy. Yeah, definitely playing a very hit and run style here, um, which I don't know if that's worth it because we do see Dabs resetting there, but we do still have a little bit of time left on our corrupt intervention, so maybe we can make something happen before that is completely gone and all gens are available to our survivors. And again, we're going to be seeing the aura, but back over here, it is a fully healthy survivor. At this point now, in the next three seconds, we're going to be seeing those corrupt gens now get those uh, 10 tickles off of those things there. Going to now be completely exposed to be able to be worked on. Still have not seen a generator get complete thus far, but we've at least know the one's pretty far along. There's generator number one popping off in the distance. We also see the deadlock. Really nice play here by Dabs to force the uncloak completely, and then stepping through the pallet space. That way you don't have them just simply breaking the pallet while they're still cloaked. Yeah, and um, I do want to point out we did have a deadlock popping up off in the distance as well as that generator first popped. So Tress and Godly has a little bit of help here while he's chasing Megan to slow that gen progress down a bit. Yeah, and we saw Trust and Godly try and do the quick head tilt up to bait the fact that they're going to go into a uh, pallet stun. I don't think it really got Megan out of uh, like out of position, but just being able to hold tight around this loop, able to get the down before the vault again. Also, I believe, yeah, this is going to be a basement hook here. This is going to be rough. really rough. 
Yeah, our first hook is coming in a little bit late with two gens already done, but it is in the basement, so uh oh. What are you doing, uh -oh. Trustin Godly? He's stuck. Yeah. Oh no. You're admiring the uh the rave. roof of the basement. He's broken. Oh no. <laughs> Now we're also happy to look at the floor. Hey, you know what though? Kind of works out in your favor if you think about it, right? Like you get to do it while in the basement. Like what are the chances anybody's really going to be pushing down into you over here? The other thing though, if you look at the gens that have been done, actually this corner by basement has kind of been depleted as far as the generator is also going to be seeing the courtyard gen. Oh, that's not a courtyard gen. It's just on the other side in the middle, but kind of just taking care of like the bottom floor over here. So I don't know. They might even allow the... Uh, progression at least in the second stage and maybe even get close to elimination before they send two people in. You'll get one more gen done. Yeah, absolutely. They've got, definitely got a lot of time. They can kind of go ahead and capitalize on those gens. Um, probably making a safe assumption that Tress and Godly isn't really going to leave this basement area anyway. Oh, nice play and patience here to be able to avoid the borrowed time now actually going to be continuing to chase down this survivor here as well waiting down the borrowed time which would then allow you to be able to get the down instead though is going to use the bell and get back to the basement i think we had seen somebody down on the first floor over here that might have been pushing down so we wanted to make sure no one came in for the pickup and you at least get the easy one for one yeah i might as well take the hook state instead especially because that is going to only be our second hook with our final gen popping. Unfortunately, we didn't get the hook before uh, our no way out was proc'd. So we only have one stack of that. Yeah, it sucks. So that's tough. So instead of 36 seconds before the doors would be able to be powered, if we had gotten the second stack, it's only going to be 24. It also looks like we've got deliverance across the way, which means nobody had to uh, take the time and risk going into the basement. I would imagine with us having Ace here and Chase on the second floor, we have people probably split on the other two doors. We'll probably at least be seeing a three out. But right now, you'll notice one swing of the... M1, and that is going to be a down thanks to the no one escapes death. I was going to say, we see it, but they weren't aware of it yet. No one escapes death is active. We do see the doors pop. I don't... I would be interested to see if our survivors even bother coming back at this point. Um... Yeah, they, I was going to say, knowing that totem spawns on this map are a little interesting i would be surprised if they even tried to make the save which they won't they are going to go ahead and take the three out with only five stages to our killer yeah this map definitely uh can give you some rather hidden totem spawns we had seen that the totem two was up on the second floor so it had been kind of tough to get to uh yeah it was the deliverance here as far as on a lack trend that gave them some pretty good value and uh yeah, I mean, honestly, pretty solid all the way around. Also, when we look as far as the blood points, that is something that we'll want to keep in mind. Sometimes uh, shorter games does mean on our survivor side, you know, less blood points. It does, of course, also restrict the killer's blood points. Um, but we did see yesterday, I think once or twice, the overall blood point count uh, was used as a tiebreaker. But we are currently looking at a two to nothing lead for Calamity. And again, you guys, if you are curious how we are getting that score, please type exclamation mark rules in chat so you can kind of take a look at what our scoring criteria is because it does work a little differently than our regular season games. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, though, Calamity um, showing up to play on the survivor side, right? I mean, just really coming out and that was, I mean, they just deleted those gens. Absolutely. I mean, that was, they were <laughs> very, very efficient. Oh, yes. Very fast. Very efficient. Um, I definitely... Uh, I think this kind of just highlights that Wraith is not very... I'm not very good anymore. I mean, I, don't know. I, I think the big thing with the Wraith that's tough is, especially on a map like that, it's, it, it's easy to at least somewhat communicate where he's at, even when they break chase. Because you know where the stairs are, you can kind of anticipate where he's coming from. Whereas if you're on an open map, like let's say, I, I don't know, like the, I'll say one of the swamp maps. Like once he disappears and gets cloaked, 
Because of some of his changes, he can get across the map pretty well undetected. But again, a map like Midwitch, it's just it's it's really hard to manage for any killer, really. Yeah, it's it's kind of easy to communicate where exactly you last saw him going, and there are only so many ways to get anywhere on that kind of map. So that does <laughs> yeah, make a lot of sense. <laughs> like there's only there's only so many. Like you can go w down one hallway or down the other, and that's about it. I mean, the one thing that would have been working to our wraiths kind of to their favor when we got to the classrooms, most of the loops you can use your uncloaking speed to mind game around those tiles and still get yourself a pretty secure down. But um, again, be I think because it's so easy to pre-leave based off of when wraith leaves chase, it's easy to kind of keep an eye on where they are, they're at. You just, all you end up doing is creating more time for everyone else to pound out the gen also the flashlight uh was able like to waste like a whole lot of time when you talk about they had one body burn and a couple of times like wraith was kind of having to, like just break away from chase to prevent the burn so yeah like they really had to they, they really harassed uh the wraith with that flashlight there and did a lot of good for themselves with that all right so i'm trying to figure out who maybe i should be looking for here um because now we'll probably we'll be seeing calamity's killer right mm -hmm. against so that um, mean i'm joining lactrin maybe i don't know if lactrin is their killer i'll see if they're maybe in the lobby with their killer i don't know if that's the case i'm gonna leave for a second and wait for a invite here yeah we should be getting that suit. So, we did. Oh, we have a request to stretch. So, a stretch. Um, well, a joke's stretch. on you guys. I'm already stretched. How about that? I'm already standing. How about that? Uh, yeah, I'm sitting down. I'm gonna stretch. I'm older. I gotta, <laughs> gotta stretch. Um. So we saw a ray. All seeing coxcomb clapper ray. Nonetheless. All seeing coxcomb clapper ray. Um, what would you like to see next? Um, to kind of follow that up. Maybe, I mean, maybe we'll get your piggy, get another, like, pseudo, uh, get another stealth killer for, like, a pseudo stealth killer. Yeah, I feel like that'd be a nice, like, combat back, right? Maybe, maybe even if we did see, uh, I know I'd seen somebody in chat, I believe those duckies say that they've submitted for a piggy game, so maybe we see that here. Um, which would be cool, because I feel like piggy's one of those interesting killers when you look at um you know the power that you have as far as the hats it's like rng is so heavy sometimes those hats come off at the very first box it's right next to your hook and sometimes i need to go to all four boxes and it's, it feels tough you yeah, know it's not a not a good time um yeah i i feel like the rng can make it really exciting i mean and, and again a lot a lot of times sometimes you just get the hat off at the first box but sometimes you can get some really fun you can force some really fun scenarios um if you find someone who's not quite so lucky and we do have the links in chat you guys um if you want to go ahead and toss some challenges to our players, please feel free to do that. Again, everything that you put towards challenges for them when they complete those play streams is going to match for our prize pool. So supporting them also helps support us if you guys were concerned about that. Um, this is all going towards our prize pool for ne our upcoming season, our next season of Vigo's Court. So... Um, this is not only supporting our uh, some of our players now, but also, you know, building support for our future events coming up. And also making people do some really silly things. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's been fun. I mean, we've seen, like you mentioned before, we've seen a couple of killers uh, pretty consistently needing to uh, look up, look down. We saw our Wraith have to do both of them last time back to back. Um... There we go. Now we're in a lobby. Now we're cooking, baby. Uh, now we'll go ahead and get... I think I had Drax, right? Yeah, I should be. There he is. Drax. See, let's get it. Oh. 
All right, also keeping in mind, this is getting ready to move into our second trial here as far as on Rebels and Calamity. So if Ruby Wolves and Mirage, Mirage, could do me a favor and, um, you know, make sure y'all are ready after this trial. We started on time today. We're going to try and keep a good pace. Um, even yesterday, honestly, again, big shout out to uh, everyone as from the, the crew in the background working so hard as well as to our all of our competitors for kind of helping us catch up. And we pretty well ended right on time last night. Y'all are amazing. So uh, big shout out to y'all. We're going to try and keep things rolling today. I think we've kind of gotten, we had some learning curves. This is our first tournament with the, the play stream. We have done, of course, a couple of the exhibitions during the season last year, but that's four trials the same team you know what i mean like it's a lot changes there's a lot of moving parts here so it, i think it seems like we've really kind of gotten iron things out so we appreciate you yeah thank you guys so much for uh going on this journey with us with all of our play stream stuff i definitely am happy with uh where we are with it now um and i do like the how fast paced this all is kind of compared to how our exhibition matches were going mm -hmm. um and also you guys are putting in a lot of really fun challenges so yeah, I mean, I think at first, a lot of it was understanding the challenges. And I think, one, we've had a lot of people who've kind of at least seen a couple of the exhibitions kind of understand how it works now. But also, too, I think for us, and we, I mean, we've kind of seen it. We've been throwing up the links now in chat, um, you know, over and over this way. Yeah, that way. Um, You know, pretty early. We're kind of getting, you know, again, we've kind of gotten a good routine with it. Um. So that's a good time to, again, big shout out to everyone working in the back. Sam, the man being the main uh, man with the plan, the man behind the curtains, the one who uh, doesn't get to show their pretty face and get all the, uh, the the benefits like Shep and I do. We have the easy job. Uh, they're doing the, the hard work, honestly, in the back. So big shout out to them. And shout out to Shep, too, for, you know, I, f I feel like I got to also shout out to Shep. Boy. <laughs> No, when it comes to, when it comes to this, I'm just a caster. <laughs> I do I do get I do get the easy job when it comes to live streams. Now we do have at this point what is it next weekend already? We've got um. Is it already next weekend that we start that? No, a week and a half, right? Yeah, I was going to say, I think we still have um, some time. I think we don't start until the first. Well, I thought that was like the last stuff that was, I thought that was like the end that was actually going to be broadcasted. I meant as far as like the actual start of it, I think is a, a week from tomorrow, I think, or something like that. I think so. Something like that. So we're right around the corner like from seeing our... Um, qualifiers getting started off for season three. Season three is going to be dope. I really can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, oh, yeah. rosters are already oh, starting yeah. to look stacked as far as some teams coming in. Um, last year we had a lot of good competition. We've, uh, got a team that's pretty familiar to Vigos, um, from the good old days that may or may not be making a comeback. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, we have a lot of familiar faces coming back. Um, some people from last season, some people from earlier seasons even. Um, but we have a lot of new teams to Vigos, but not to Comp coming in. We have a lot, oh, quite a few teams who are new teams. Um, I heard from one of... captain. I heard from one captain. They were willing to say arguably the best roster in competitive DVD history. So... Uh, pretty heavy claims, yeah, I must say. Pretty there. heavy claims. Um, but looking at the roster, I am going to be interested to see how it plays out. So yeah, uh, there are there are some teams who I'm kind of looking at them and I'm like, woof. That's yeah, gonna be it's gonna be really tough. Fun. That's but it's gonna, gonna be, really be fun when they cross paths too, because we're gonna have quite. Yeah. I, I think we're gonna have quite a few teams. It's, it's, it's kind of like the way the last season, right? Like we had a couple teams that kind of separated from the pack early, but then also had some people kind of playing catch up in the end. I'll, I'll anticipate that we're gonna have at least, especially when we talk about the A League, because uh, that's something new we're bringing this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be stacked. I can't wait. Definitely excited to see, um, again, a lot of new 
new faces, a lot of teams coming out. Going to be really exciting to see how that all plays out. Um, and also quite a few changes to, um, not quite our format, um, but some of our rulings. Of course, we've had new killers come out since last season, new perks. Yep. Who, uh, which are going to be introduced into um, our next season. Uh, those are all the balancing and stuff of that is all being worked out right now. So um, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how this next season shapes up. Really, really excited. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we're not too far away. I know every time we show the promo over on my stream, uh, I get pretty hyped for it. It's going to be a... Uh... It's gonna be it's gonna be a banger for sure. Gonna be a doozy. I'm also really excited um, because I I know over the course of our last season, uh, you know, we got to see kind of some pickup as far as momentum and uh, kind of exposure for Vigo's court. I think some people hadn't heard the news that Vigo's was back, you know. So I think that word kind of started getting around the community. Um, we definitely saw. I mean, throughout throughout the playoffs this last season, playoffs. Um, I, just a whole bunch of, I mean, just banger matchup after banger matchup. Uh, even just, even our end of our regular season when it was between non-playoff teams were still amazing, so. Yeah, we still had really, really good games, and I think it was really important to point out that, like, of course there has to be somebody who loses in a matchup, right? Right. But a lot of our teams really proved that they weren't losing because they were bad teams. Like, there were really no bad teams, in last season they were just you know somebody has to lose so i mean that's even i think part of the reason why we had seen some teams um like go on like earlier losing streaks and then be able to have the tears back is it wasn't so much about like being behind in the early part of the season it's just sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles you know what i mean like like you said someone's gotta lose in a matchup sometimes and um, especially when we're talking about when, when regular season comes around and you're kind of limited to your killer selection. So that is, becomes a extra factor that's thrown in over the course of 12 weeks. So, yeah, cause you definitely have to play very strategically with what you use where, mm -hmm. um, and also I feel like a lot of our teams were feeling each other out, but I did really appreciate how last season we really didn't know, like we kind of had a vague idea of like, okay, yeah, these teams have been doing really well. They're probably going to go to finals. Or like, you know, we had our undefeated teams, mm -hmm. but we definitely had some like wild cards in there, like up until even the last week of regular competitive play, like where we were like, I don't know. I don't know who's going. So really, really appreciated that from last season. So I'm looking forward to another really, really good season um, this, this season. <laughs> Yeah, it should be fun. I see we've got some survivors readying up. I know it looks like they're looking they're ready on their side. I'm not sure if our killer may be uh, still getting some last challenges across or uh, anything like that. As far as completed challenges thus far in the tournament, we're at $623 earned uh, and contributed towards that end pot here. Definitely huge. Um, I, I wonder if maybe we see... Some teams, uh, fans may be holding on for a little bit later in the tournament and start throwing some curveballs across the way to the other team. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I don't know. I think we might be in for some really fun surprises later on in the day. Now, of course, with this matchup here, uh, again, keep in mind, we've talked about it earlier. This is our first matchup of the day, and we're in loser's bracket round two. So currently looking at Calamity being up two to nothing. And if they are to win, they would be moving on to play the winner of our next matchup in the following matchup. That makes sense. They play the winner of the next matchup in the following matchup of the day before we go over to our winner's bracket, which will be Frozo versus Pub Stop Purs. And if you guys are interested in looking at those brackets or learning more about our rules, type, type exclamation mark rules in chat as we've brought up before, but I'll keep talking about it because we, we're going to have new people coming in throughout the day. Um, our rules are a little different because this is a play stream tourney. It is not part of our regular season. So we did a couple things different here as far as our scoring system goes. Um, it's a little bit more lax than uh, what you might normally see from us. 
around in these here parts. All right, I see survivors back up and running, waiting to get confirmation before we do indeed switch over though i know sometimes especially um if they're getting like last second i don't know if maybe we have like a last second like killer pick or something i'm still hoping i'm holding on pick for the pig because i'm i'm really want to you know what i'm kind of i'm kind of hoping for that too all right i want you to i want you to get yours would it be or possible to do um add like a secondary objective like can we have someone if they know it's going to be a pig um request that everyone boops the snoot because that'd be fun that's a really good. That's a really good question. I it should be a should be a request we can make. Cause like after you boop, they're allowed to hit you. That's I think that's fair. But everyone has to boop before they leave. I think that'd be a fun. Uh... Is it okay, boop if you come in injured? That's a you problem. <laughs> yeah. Also, look, let me look over here as far as... I'm going to click back in so you might freeze for a second. Smile. All right. As far as when we look at our killer pool here. Um, oh, actually, it looks like we're good here. to switch. Uh -oh. um, we haven't seen an artist yet, right? No, we ended up seeing an artist in the evening yesterday on RCPD. Kind of want to see that again. Uh, we saw a nemesis yesterday, right? Yeah, we saw a nemesis yesterday. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think like who haven't we seen? I know there was like a blight played yesterday. Uh, I was gonna say trickster, but we have seen trickster. We have seen a trickster. Yeah. I know. Okay, so. I know. Doc was really holding on to hope to see uh, some Evan gameplay yesterday. Uh, strong trapper, strong trapper. Yeah, yes. we we did not get that, unfortunately. All right, um, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put that out. <laughs> and hope that we get that then, because that'd actually be kind of funny. I do you believe many... though, also because we know that they are a, uh, a Vigo's court favorite, and I know you talked about them earlier. I don't think we've seen Legion yet. I'm holding out hope. I really am holding out hope. I think it'd be fun to do like a Legion on like a. Um, dead dog sort of situation Ooh, and we've got us a piggy back on midwitch here i think that's fair you know stealth killer on midwitch for stealth killer on midwitch i'm i'm down to get down here we do see of course the corrupt intervention into play we do see a glowy totem here right in front of our killer gonna be able to sneak up onto jag and get the uh first lunch here gonna be now going to the first floor to try and continue chasing it does look like jag will probably be moving towards the section of the map that's more of the corrupt on it yeah definitely looks like we're going to pull our killer away from our active generators which is going to give our teammates plenty of time to try and go ahead and get those done we are going to throw this uh god palette here to try to buy ourselves just a little bit of time staying our feet long enough for it to make a difference I think that's a missed skill check over there, so that's kind of rough. Yeah, that is going to be... I, yeah, or maybe a fast vault for some reason. I don't know why you had fast vault, but uh, we do see trying to use the dash to be able to get the down onto Jag. That's going to be big. You already got your first trap out here before you see number one generator popping off. I was wondering if we were going to be seeing a flashlight save, but uh, unfortunately you can't blind the piggy from the back, you know? Yeah, the uh, flashlight does not apply to the back of the head, unfortunately. So we are going to pick up Chase with our... Oh, I guess not. Those sparks do let us know that that totem we saw was ruined, though. Now, as far as our add-ons here, I mean, we did see as far as a little bit of the value um, when actually arming the trap itself onto Jag. It was a little bit quicker thanks to the uh, help of the crate of gear is down there. We also have the tampered timer, uh, which reduces the duration, which can be tough, especially on a map like Midwich, where you're dealing with boxes that are both on a top and bottom floor, right? Because this is a little bit of a smaller map, you can kind of pressure your survivor away from boxes as well. 
It is interesting, though. Oh, maybe going to be able to pull off the body block to prevent hook stage number two, or to get to hook stage number two. We do see, though, Claudette. Rolo doing a good job playing patient. Going to be able to get the pull for save right before the second stage here. Going to be a very easy second hat and a oh we're not even gonna go for the hook stage here what we're gonna going to do is actually keep chase with our nancy and i really like this decision because you've already had it your other survivor a lot of pressure here for our piggy you've got the slug both people have hats on someone's gonna have to go get that pickup and now it's do we want to pop a generator and activate these timers they're not going to know about our add-ons just yet um but these are pretty common add-ons to see. So uh, they are probably going to find out very soon that the clock is definitely ticking for those survivors with hats on. Yeah, I would assume. Yeah, I'm sure they will probably assume at least the tampered timer. Uh, we are going to see though the down here onto Jag at this point. Jag was just recently on a hook though, so the question is: Is Jag the player with the decisive strike? The answer is no. However, so this is now going to be hook stage number two, second hook stage onto Jag here as well, and this is going to be before we see generator number two popping. But we do hear the ruin now getting cleansed. Ruin out of the way, our survivor's gonna have a little bit less pressure, um, but they're still gonna have to worry about getting those hats off. We do see our first hat removed from the Claudette, so now it's just making sure that Jag can get off this hook, get that hat off, and maybe stay in this trial a little bit longer so that we can get a little bit more gen pressure down before this becomes a 3v1. Yeah, we do see Draxy doing a good job of holding the aggro, at least being able to pull dabs far enough away for the hook, for the hook, uh, for the unhook to come in here. We do see a second survivor set up trying to take some protection. Uh, we, I'm sure they'll probably be able to call out the pig that is trying to be stealthy, but of course, uh, you know, comms are a thing, so we will see Jag breaking away from that box. Going to be able to hear them through the wall here, and I don't think with the ambush you're going to be able to make this pallet. That's going to be it down and unless you have someone nearby for a pallet save this is going to be an elimination before a second generator has popped I think this is a much more relaxed format those eliminations still count and as we've said from the get go uh, the game changes once it becomes a 3v1 yeah, I mean, we hear this generator up here has a whole lot of progress. Not sure if maybe they're trying to prep a couple of gens around the 99 mark now that they know about the deadlock that's in play. Uh, but we are going to be seeing Dabs quickly going into that crouch row. Does get rid of the terror radius just for a second here. Not seeing any survivors on the gen, though. Does go ahead and just goes and applies the dry kick. At this point, oh, actually, able to find an ace. Not going to be able to find a connection, though. I kind of feel like right now might be the time for Dabs to go ahead and Break that breakable door there. It does kind of break down this loop a little bit here. Seeing the scratch marks, though, away from this generator. Instead, just going to go ahead and pursue Chase down this hall. And it looks like we still have a lot of resources in this area that we're going to try to make use of. Of course, going for the crouch and able to like connect with a hit. Uh, but we do see our second generator popping that's going to deadlock this gen right above us, letting us kind of know where we have a little bit of pressure generator-wise. Could be 99 uh, because they would be aware of deadlock at this point, but no way of knowing for sure. And here we are. We are now at this point. We're by a basement, too. This is going to be tough. This is the first hook here on to Trust and Godly. So Trust does have some time that they can just, uh, you know hang out um but that does mean that our survivors need to make sure that they're getting some very critical um gens done i mean also not only are you getting closer to being able to get some escapes uh but also with the game taking a little bit longer you're getting yourself some saves you are upping up those blood points here which is pretty important as well yeah the blood points here are definitely going to be important we do see that unhook come in so Trust isn't going to have to spend too much time down in that basement. And luckily, they popped that generator before the hat was applied. So he's going to have time to try to go ahead and get that off of his head so that they can start getting these gens popped once more. 
And we do see Claudette is going to stay up in the same classroom. This is a pretty nice tile to be able to work around. Um, it can be mind-gamed, but especially against the pig, unless they're going into the crouch, which then he can just hold W. But nice double back, able to catch Rolo here. And Rolo is now going to be catching a hat. This is two-hatted survivors, so this will probably be a point where we see our survivors slowing the game down just a little bit as we wait for Trust and Rolo here to both be able to find uh, where those hats come off at. We can also hear this generator top mid has a whole lot of progress. Wondering if that person sitting there, was that some breakout value maybe? Uh, it may have been, and we are going to see this gen get popped right in our piggy's face. And I will note, um, that is the second hat for Claudette, so we have no more hats to apply to our survivors. Of course... Two of our survivors have a hat on their head, so they're going to have to focus on getting that off right now. And with that creative gears and tamper time where they're not going to have a lot of time to waste, we are going to have to watch Zarina hang out for just a little bit. Yeah, and this is going to be tough because both of the survivors who are currently not on the hook both need to remove those hats. We've got a Piggy who hears that they were unable to get it off in this box here, which means now we can just take Chase with Ace. It will calm down Ace's timer just for a second before we get the ambush attack here. That will change the health state as far as on Ace. Three injured survivors across the board here now back to the same tile. However, again, by Dabs, able to get a very quick down up here. This is going to be another hook. Claudette's timer is going to be ticking right now. Also, worth noting, we we saw a heal. I'm not sure if Zarina had, was, has a bed kit and was able to heal themselves. Because if not, that means Claudette took time to heal instead of searching boxes. Which is an interesting decision, knowing that uh, you don't have a lot of time to try to get these hats off. Maybe they're hoping that RNG is a little bit on their side this time. And we do see here now at this point, though, you have been able to uh, find the scratch marks as well as the blood pools. Those are going to be from Rolo there, but instead doubling back. And I like this decision, right? Because you can probably anticipate that Rolo's timer is very far along. So if you can come over here, prevent the reset, put a little bit more pressure over here. Maybe RNG might work on your side and you can also uh, get a trap kill. And I mean, I'm always down to see a trap kill when we're watching some piggy. If for being honest oh yeah i always love seeing heads i hate i hate when it happens to me but i love seeing heads pop Ooh, Ooh. a last second hat removal there a nice body block to help uh her teammate get that off their head but now we're trapped in this very small room with a very angry piggy so gonna hope that maybe we can buy some time for our teammates to find each other and reset but unfortunately we're gonna go down at this pallet yeah, so now you have lost as far as the pressure from the hats, but it bought you some pretty good slowdown as far as here in the mid portion of the trial. We got a little bit of a walk here. Not sure if we've got Draxy somewhere in the distance. If Draxy could even be under them for all we know, giving them some extra value from the breakout. We do see, though, going to be able to get Claudette onto a hook. That's going to be a fresh hook. That's two more stages that can be progressed if our survivors want to try and focus some gens. We do have a pretty good gen spread here. Um, she's going to have to walk quite a distance, and that's going to be a deliverance, actually. So we don't even have to have Ooh. someone go and take the time to get the unhook as we pick up Chase with Ace here. So that means Zarina and Claudette are free to get on generators while we pick up Chase. Yeah, one thing to keep in mind, I think in this corner of the school, a lot of the resources have been thrown. We had seen on the first floor, most of them have been thrown. We do still have this pallet up here, which can be played around. Of course, also with the window right next to it, this pallet also being up, actually. So on the second floor, we do have some room to play with. Trying to have the mind game, able to get the down onto Trust and Godly here. This is going to be big. I don't believe we have anyone close for a pallet save. So this is now going to be hooks state number eight for dabs and our second elimination of the game we are now two survivors down two gens left to complete and unfortunately we find our zarina working on a generator that is very far progressed yeah, and this is going to be 
Oh, though we do see Draxy doing a uh, really good heads up play. Does hear the little kind of snarl, right? Or the, the oink? I get, is it an oink? Snarl? Anyways, um, from the piggy before the ambush there. So able to just basically hold, shift a W, head away from that t tile itself. Takes the M1, though, very quickly. So it does mean at this point, two injured survivors across the board. I believe both Draxy and Rolo have both been hooked. Oh, no, Rolo's only been hooked. No, yeah, they've both been hooked once, and if that's the case, because Rolo was just hooked. hooked. I think they've both been hooked once. Actually, have we seen Draxy go up and hooked? Yeah, we have. Okay. I, was, okay, I, I, I figured we had hat. to because Rolo had his, uh, had the deliverance in the last one. So that means there were, there had to have been one more hook stage, which would have made sense. I so I I had to look down the bottom left. I and I know sometimes Discord's kind of hard to see down there. Yeah, to I see exactly what the. Yeah. Oh, we do know though. This oh. generator's got a lot of progress and dabs. However, of course, they are going to be in comms, right? So we can assume that Rolo knows that dabs is over here. Uh, Crouch, which does get rid of the terror radius. Now Dabzo should be able to monitor this gen as well as monitoring the hook. And oh, no, that's actually going to be Rolo down here at the end of the hallway moving into. Oh, no. Oh, the dead hard. nice dead hard, but into the corner. So unfortunately, nowhere to go. That would have been nice if you got that all the way through the, the door frame, though, right? Yeah, the dead heart to the door frame would have been huge. I still don't know if they would have really made it very much further, but um, unfortunately, we are going to dead heart into a corner, which is going to give Babs the opportunity to get the M1 and the down. And that looks like a 4K with one generator left on the table. And what that is going to result in there, remember, uh, on the survivor side, we had seen Calamity have a very impressive performance on this map. Uh, it was against a uh, all-seeing Wraith. So that is actually going to result in a Calamity here. Um, moving on with a 4 to nothing win here. Really good job as far as on their part. Big shout out to Rebels here for uh, signing up for the tournament. It was a blast to have you guys. We hope to see you maybe even in a future event. But before we find out who Calamity is going to be facing off against in losers bracket round three, we still have to have our other losers bracket round two game. So we're gonna be moving on to Ruby Wolves versus Mirage here should be next. This one should be fun because this is going to feature um, two rosters that of like kind of like combined friends on some different teams together. Uh, seeing some of the Arctic Wolves uh, on part of the roster, seeing some Ruby Wolves obviously uh, on the Ruby Wolves. So this is gonna be fun. Yeah, a lot of people who are uh, friends with each other, teammates, uh, probably very familiar with each other and each other's play styles. So I think we're in for some really good games here. Yeah, this is going to be a real banger here. The The question, though, is what are we going to see and what map are we going to see it on? Because, of course, they don't have the control of that. The viewers do. This is a play stream tournament. You'll see over in chat right over yonder there we've got a whole slew of links for you guys to follow remember even though you are going to be challenging this the players directly that does also support us over here at vigo's court as well one you are going to be putting a little bit of coin in our convicts pockets i see that's what we did with the title uh you're gonna be putting some coin in their pocket during the actual tournament itself but playstream is matching every dollar at least up to that 1500 uh that you see up there in that top right hand corner up over yonder way there so um make sure you're putting in those challenges we've seen a lot of fun we've seen some no mither challenges uh, we've already seen today two different stealth killers that we don't typically see in comp so uh you know throw some so throw some curveballs at these teams yeah I, I very much appreciate that we haven't seen too many repeat killers so you guys are doing a really good job of keeping this very interesting and very fresh um getting the chance to see some, kill some killers you wouldn't normally see in regular competitive gameplay um yeah, really, really loving how this is going today, really. So we do see here at this point. So I'm gonna, let's go back into... Um, let's go into our killer screen. So we haven't seen Legion. Have we seen a plague? I don't think we have. 
I know I missed a couple games yesterday, but I don't know. If I, saw I'm Plague. trying to remember if we saw Plague with Doc last night, and I can't remember, to be honest with you. Uh, we saw Twins. We've see, seen Blight. We've seen Trickster. We've seen Nemesis. We've seen Artist. We have not seen Xenobite. We have not. I don't think we've seen a. Not seen Pyramid Head. We saw mm -mm. Death Slinger. We have not seen Oni. We've seen Demo Dog. We've seen a pair of Ghost Face. Again, I can't remember on the Plague. I think we might have. We have not I seen know. Legion. I don't think we've seen Plague. We haven't seen Legion. We've seen Spirit. We saw we saw a nurse. We saw a Billy. We saw a Wraith today, and we haven't seen Trapper. Have we seen a clown? I'm trying to or think. Or Freddy. We haven't seen Freddy, and I don't think we've seen Bubba. So I think up until that last round, this whole li lion right here hadn't been played. So now Pig's been played. This whole lion's been played, right? Huntress was played. I know we've seen the other yeah. three. Slow, slow actually played Huntress on RPD. That's right. That's right on RPD. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys like my doc, uh, doc impression? Um, so we've got Trapper, Bubba, Freddy, Clown, Oni, Executioner, Cenobite. Is Onryo on the table technically? Do we know? I don't see why she wouldn't be. Um, because this isn't regular season gameplay. Right. So I don't know why she wouldn't be. Onryo is uh, such an interesting killer. I I just I don't know. Like I feel like I feel like her, like I feel like a lot of killers, like Hag, there can be so much strategy that goes into setting up your blood web and monitoring the blood web, making sure you don't overextend it at chases, stuff like that. But then you just also have the hag that just puts like five traps by the hook in place with her scroll wheel and just camps to the hook without camping the hook, right? And I feel kind of the same like Unreal. I feel like when you look at Sadako, you, like when you look at her, the being able to progress people up through the condemnation status, forcing some engagement with the tapes, which gives you some additional slowdown, that takes skill, but a lot of people are just kind of using her as a way to just teleport back to the TV by the hook. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have seen some... Um... In, in the wild, wild west of pubs, I have seen some Onryos who do use the TVs um, to really good effect in chase. Like, they'll use it to, like, get really good cutoffs um, or, you know, interesting little stealth things here and there. But, yeah, really, don't really see the TVs used for anything too, too interesting too consistently. So, but again, I think... It just takes a lot more effort than some people might want to put into a uh, playing killer. You know, when you have other options, that's so much effort when you could play literally something else. Right. I think one of the like misconceptions with her is like a lot of people think she's like a hit and run play style killer, which obviously with the boon meta and um you know stuff like that we've seen the hit and run play style killers kind of taking a back seat when it comes to pubs um but i think if you talked about the way you were talking right like you, if you just play more of the the direct interactions in one single chase trying to cut them off with like the freddy style teleport so not only do you catch them at an unexpected angle but you're also increasing their condemned status at the same time it kind of it's like a two birds with one stone sort of deal so the thing with Unreal 2 that I think people don't consider or remember is that she is a stealth killer. Uh -huh. She's not a chase killer. She's a stealth killer. Um, So you kind of like she doesn't have any chase power because that's not what she's meant for. Right. So I, I feel like a lot of people don't really consider that. Um, And so people are disappointed because she's not supposed to be played for for chase and that's what people try to play her for well i mean to be fair when you look at a lot of the killers that we've released as of late a lot of them kind of are primary chase killers right um and chase killers are a lot of like anti-loop you know so i think with it being such a different play style required um it, it just it makes people it gives people the perception that she's weaker than i think she is however and uh i think we had this conversation yesterday i still feel like there's just something missing with her. Yeah, I, I think 
she's got a lot of really cool ideas behind her and there's a lot of potential but she just kind of falls flat for yeah. some reason and it's and it's beyond people not playing her to her full potential but we you know we also saw the same kind of issues with pinhead and i think people have been kind of figuring out how to best take advantage of him and his kit so hopefully uh in the next you know month or so we can kind of see people figuring out the best play style for her and figuring out how to make her really nasty um maybe there is just something we're not seeing that somebody else is going to find soon enough I couldn't see what map was set. I see. Yeah, I so it's on Suffocation Pit. I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm intrigued though. I am intrigued. Oh, do you have all the knowledge now? Yes, the the roles have changed. Ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> no, you'd be able to find it too. It's 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 in our Discord. But you just we're to, oh, we're boy. we're counting on you to, you know. I won't, the, I won't look. Put I the won't blinders look. on. No, it, this should be a fun. It is going to be. Uh, it is going to be a killer that we have not seen. So it is one of the ones that we've we we mentioned not too long ago here. Um, chase hag. Ooh, imagine though. But no, that'd be fun. I feel like if you do chase hag, it's got to be a little bit smaller of a map though, right? Yeah, I think I think trying to make someone do chase hag on Suffo Pit is like, wow, you really dislike that person, huh? Like you really hate them. Q. <laughs> or you're just Q and you're a demon. Like it's <laughs> No, I'm not saying that. I just I feel what you're saying, which is why I just I feel for our killer. Anyways, chat, so we are going to be getting ready to uh, load in here. Again, Suffocation Pit. I'm not going to be spoiling who the killer is. It is one that we haven't seen yet. Suffocation Pit, of course, being one of the um, maps that sometimes you can get a little bit of extra help uh, from RN Jesus. We sometimes see that middle gen kind of flexing one side or the other. Sometimes we even see the fourth gen kind of coming more towards the top side. And then even a fifth side, a fifth gen like sliding in that middle spot. So. I don't know what's been going on with Cepho Pit lately, but I feel like 50% of my scrims on that map have been a 5 and 2 like mm -hmm. setup. Like, clearly a 5 and 2 setup, too. Like, no, like, it's four gens and then, like, a middle gen and then two at the bottom. It's all five gens are in the top and then two in the bottom, and the, the middle is just like a well get fucked zone. Which is tough because the middle, man, sometimes, especially to the middle, you have those back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back tiles, depending on what kind of RNG there. You can also get, if you talk about not having any gens there, then you can just waste a killer's time just taking chase in the middle, you know? Yeah, but then that, like, that's a cramped area to have all, like, if you have five gens up top, it's so cramped mm -hmm. that, like, the killer can just sit there and watch every single gen, especially of a hill. You just sit there. And you slow the game to a crawl because all it is is you pushing them off of generators. And they can they can go and reset all they want, but you can still push them off very easily. So it just becomes like a war of attrition at that point. <laughs> hmm. All right, so we are starting off here. It looks like we are going to be having Ruby Wolves on the survivor side first. Which does mean that Mirage is on the killer side here. Going to be seeing Arrhenius on the killer. Uh, Iridori, Arrhenius, formerly known as Iridori, I guess would be the way of putting it, right? Arrhenius now being the new... The, the, the lady, new... lady of uh, many, many names. La yes, the lady of many names. Um, many, many hats, too. Uh, I believe Dory is part of Mirage, part of um, Arctic Wolves also part of our Vigo's court staff does a lot around the community so uh does, does a lot yeah gonna be exciting to see as far as on the killer side i'm seeing a lot of readying up which makes me think that both the killers and the survivors have all their challenges and everything in here um so even though i haven't gotten official word i'm just gonna go ahead and switch on over uh because if they're ready we're ready it's kind of my rules you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and it looks like they are indeed ready Let's see here with the offerings. We haven't seen... Again, we, we've we seen Mori offerings come up, but I'm pretty sure the only Moris that we have seen in-game have been Rancor Moris. Yeah. 
<laughs> the Rancorn Mori with Michael Myers, I think. Of all people. Yeah, and then we saw another one in the evening last night. I can't remember who it was with, but it was another Rancor Mori while we were with Doc beautiful. last night. But I, it was, it. I think it was the same situation, though, where, like, a Mori was brought in, but you got the obsession down, like, you know, with one hook. So that's not a Mori. No, not a Mori, <laughs> indeed. And we still will not be seeing a Mori today. We are going to get the Kakao. And if you guys are interested in how uh, we are scoring this or the rules for this, go ahead and type exclamation mark rules in chat. You want to say something. I do, and I'm going to go ahead and give this one away because I think it's important for our ca our um, spectators to know what we're getting into here. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and take another trip on back into the fog, seeing the Legion. But keep in mind when we get to the end game here, that slow will not be able to touch the Exegates. No. All right, and we are picking up our first chase. Of course, with that first frenzy hit, we will see where all of our survivors are. We want to respect that pallet, of course, because we don't want to get knocked out of our power just yet. It is giving us tons of information as to where all of our survivors are. So we're going to go ahead and get those amend statuses applied. Uh, heavy respect to that pallet. Going to burn out of our power, of course. But that still leaves two injured survivors kind of not too far from where we started in the top of the map. Looks like our survivors might have been a little lucky with their gen spread. Can't really tell from right here, but we do see that corrupt <sighs> intervention blocking some of those topside gens for us. Yeah, and, it, you know, now at this point, we do have the two injured survivors here, uh, one of which we're taking chase with on the backside here of Maine. This is going to be as far as where we have the uncorrupt gens as well. So this is actually very unfortunate as far as for our survivors, because if you get it down here, plus I think I had seen basement here as well, uh, might be able to really get a turnaround in the early part of the trial. However, now breaking into the frenzy itself, going to be able to get the... Oh, first hit here on the slow. Second one on to Dan. That will uh, give Dan that broken status there just for a little bit. Now seeing two heartbeats over here. Going to be getting some more value. Question is, are you going to be able to get an M1 before the power runs out? The answer is no. Fortunately, not interesting to see. I mean, of course, with uh, Eerie Button, you get tons of information because that makes your terror radius map wide, which is dependent on your frenzy detection rate. But... It means you are at the mercy of how uh, not very big the frenzy meter is. And so like as just base kit. And as far as our add-ons down here, because I think it's important to realize one uh, should be very. Um, Noticeable for a lot of people, the iridescent button, of course, does mean everyone is going to get that tear radius when going into the frenzy itself. But we've been seeing a couple of the broken statuses uh, popping up as well, and that's going to be thanks to the Legion pin there. Basically, uh, people who are have their like highlight from the feral frenzy, like the heartbeat. Once you get hit, you're broken for 60 seconds. So it's like a miniature version of. Um, I guess you could say forced penance, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a protection hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which, this is not a, a bad combo, but again, um, if you're trying to get information with that eerie button, you're not guaranteed to make it to where all of your, uh information is at because of how small the frenzy bar is. And I guess just using the frenzy bar, or the frenzy power here for uh, speed, which is an interesting choice. But we have yet to see uh, our first down. A lot of injured states being applied, but unfortunately just not the commitment to any one chase, really. Yeah, I mean, I understand because like you try and get people slowed down with the mending. It, it's kind of like built-in slowdown as far as on the gens, right? Because they're taking the time to mend and heal. But now we're going to be seeing a pallet thrown... I feel like there would have been a good point for your iridescent button, but maybe that's just me. We yeah. are now going to be seeing the hit on the Claudette, though. And again, now if you would have had an iridescent button, you could have had two people, like, in the men's status. One of them being broken because you had two people so close. Yeah, and I think we'd seen another survivor actually off to the right. Um, so, ooh. We would have had a ton of information on that, but we are going to get uh, behaviored here at this pallet and see Dan go down. Oh, and I think Slow was trying. I don't know if maybe they weren't able to get the uh, pallets done just in time or if maybe they were trying to tuck down. And uh, 
I, I, man, I, I, I feel like that's just an easy M1 that we gave up. And especially with, to a Legion who already has extra built-in slowdown. We've only got one gen. That was tough. I mean, at least you still got the resource there, right? Like, we didn't waste the resource itself, but... It is only first hook, I guess. I, maybe I'm being a little too critical. Yeah, but, I mean, it could just all go downhill, downhill from here, too. That first hook is still going to be one of hook state less, and... Uh, Dory has done a really good job of kind of slowing this game down at this point. Like, we've seen a lot of, uh, not a lot of hook states, but for all the injured statuses, we only have one gen completed. Yeah, I think that's been the important thing. Getting pretty good value every time that we do um, use that Feral Frenzy, getting multiple people to have to go ahead and get into the men's status. Also worth noting here, we do have the three gen here on top side of the map here intact. We don't see anybody working on the gen over at Pride Rock. Seeing two survivors now moving in for the save. We see the arm. Oh, oh this is going to be big value, though, that you can get from your power here going to get two people more injured one of them's going to be broken however we're taking chase with the claudette which is interesting if i might be able to be quite frank just because that is the survivor that's broken and they're not going to be able to be healed for 60 seconds so i feel like you might get more value from the nia honestly however our claudette mm, yeah no i think you're right never mind it does look like, though, Arrhenius has uh, been able to find the Nia, so it actually works out in their favor. Now moving around the main... Oh, no, this is still the Claudette. I lied. Just kidding. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh, but now m moving uh, around this pallet, though, it's not the safest of pallets, so if you can maybe make a mind game, be able to force out a mistake like a... Oh, good patience, though, from the yeah. Claudette. <gasps> that was brilliant. Yep, using our eerie button to go ahead and get that pallet out of the way without having to waste time on kicking it. We are going to continue chase here. Unfortunately, getting the down at this window. But that butter team needs plenty of time to go ahead and reset. So we have three generators done, and we are only just now getting our second hook state here. Not only breaking the pallet from the iridescent button, but being able to use the speed boost to get to right in front of the window to block the window. So you couldn't even have Claudette run through that. It really puts Claudette in such a really tough predicament between a rock and a hard place, really. And it does cost a little bit of time. So now we've seen four gens pop. But when Arrhenius looks around here, you'll be able to see the three gen on top side of our uh, map here is still intact. We've also gotten rid of a lot of the resources on this side of our map as well. Now we're going to be getting... Ooh, and the quick cancel there. Right. Uh, maybe to try to get the change, Power back quicker, um, though, too. Yeah, power back quicker. And, and also the change in health states there. Yeah, I was just surprised that you didn't give a quick uh, tap on the backside of the survivor that had just gotten off the hook just to get yourself another, like, broken status, right? Also, for you get to find out. Well, I shouldn't say find out if there's BT, but if there's a BT, you kind of get a hit anyways. Plus, it gives you the men's status regardless if there's BT or not. Now, though, looking across the scoreboard, four injured survivors. So nobody, every, everyone can be put onto the ground with just one swing of the knife here from Arrhenius. I would imagine we're probably looking at a couple of survivors across the way trying to go for a reset. There's a reset onto the Claudette there as we speak. Not sure if Nia's going to be able to make the window. That's going to be a down. I will say it is really interesting to see um, the Legion button being used. And, uh, oh no. And uh, no Thanatophobia. Yeah, I, it makes me Very think, though, choice. it makes me think, though, we have only seen two perks, so maybe, mm -hmm. maybe looking at an end gameplay, but yeah, I, I think the, uh, oh no, especially That's here now, good. too, losing a, uh, a hook state, also seeing people getting healed across the way as well, now we're going to be seeing our first state, now also not going to be able to find a connection, nice spin, though, going to be, we get the swing and a miss, which does knock Arrhenius out of their power. It's really unfortunate for Ernius there. Uh, not too much value out of your power there. That's why you don't camp pallets. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. That's just kind of the risk that you take. Sometimes you get hit still with the stun. Next time we get over there, though, I think if Arrhenius 
breaks that pallet. I do believe that pretty well depletes uh, the resources on the top side of the map, which could be some big value later. The question is, though, how much time gets wasted in this next chase? Oh, not going to find a connection here onto Slow. We see Slow taking chase onto this portion of the map into the Tino. Honestly, this is really who you want being in chase at this point of the game being Slow because, remember, Slow can't touch the exit gates. So, if you can get the last gen done while slow is in chase that's a that's a big uh prop for them because then slow can do the only thing that slow can in the end game which is keep the killer busy and of course we are going to come back up to our three gen up here and finding some survivors in the area mm, we so do where are our scratch marks taking us i did see those Oh, able to catch Ooh. slow, though. And that's going to be big because with that hit there, you do get a little bit of map information. You can see your uh, heartbeats all the way around. You can see the two people who are resetting across the map. I do believe slow should be able to make this window. Does fake it, though. Has some bodies moving in for some protection hits here as well. Looks like really trying to make sure that they're protecting the ca uh, the coach, the team captain here. Slow uh, Galeo. Remember, that's also our MVP from season number two. Nice move. Slow took that hit there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out what what exactly is our game plan here um, with who we're deciding to pick up Chase with. I don't know. It's inter I think part of it is you were trying to overcommit to chase this side because you had seen so many people moving in for protection hits. You can probably assume that there's minimal... Uh, Jen working done, but we can hear that Jen back at uh, Pride Rock has a whole bunch of progress. I mean, that thing's going click clack like an old school Cadillac. Probably only has just a couple more seconds here uh, before it's about ready to pop. Almost makes me wonder if maybe we're looking at the Ruby Wolves trying to find some totems here since they've only been uh, had two perks exposed thus far. Might be a case. Yeah, it might just be buying some time. Of course, this is also giving everyone a lot of time to go ahead and reset those injured states. Um, probably going to see Dan get reset here in a couple Whoa, seconds. Oh, nice patience by Claudette. Nice fake at the window. Oh, again, trying to go for the fake to try and bait out the M1. Not going to be the case. Arrhenius does, however, now get the M1. I, you know, yeah, no one's working on this, Jen. This has to be them. Uh, going across the maps, yeah, doing exactly like we're seeing here. Going for those totems, full sending on that one. Going to be able to get the totem cleansed on the Pride Rock by the generator that has the most progress. Now Who moving into the long wall, TNL is that survivor. I think they made quite a bit of distance. I think that might have been a life play there. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. And we do see this gem that was in front of us getting finished, as well as an adrenaline going ahead and healing our clawed up there. Yeah, and uh, chat, I know y'all can't see the perks, but you'll notice on the right side of the screen the lack of a haste status. But Arrhenius did indeed bring in Noed, also to be paired up with that No Way Out that had two stacks on it. Um, so now we are going to be taking chase with our Claudette. Claudette is going to be able to make the window here. Now about six seconds or, so, or about eight seconds left on the no way out here before our survivors can start powering the doors. Remember, slow is not allowed to power the doors. That is a challenge that is on the table. However, we are going to be seeing F going down. Uh, F's in the chat, I guess. Uh, and this is going to be hook stage number three. Yeah, very unfortunate. This was not the person you really wanted in Chase and Slow can't work on those doors. But with all four survivors still up and active in the game, I guess it doesn't really matter at that point. Um, Slow can instead maybe set up for this unhook if uh, the Ruby Wolves do indeed care to get the four out. I mean, honestly, I feel like... Oh. Well, there was, there was Slow, like you were talking about. There are definitely, it does look like they are going to try to go ahead and get this. Um, interesting to see that we're not going ahead and putting any injured states on, especially in our power. 
We, we got to make a play here, homies. We're, we're allowing Arrhenius to get that much closer to having the power back. Oh, unfortunately, going to be... Oh, don't do that. Not like this. Ever. Not like this. We have the click. Uh, we have the hit was first. Oh, not like oh, this, no. Arrhenius. Oh, Straight no. Straight into the edge of the box, unfortunately. And that's going to allow all four survivors to be able to get out the door here. One, two, three into the four. That's uh, that's huge here when you talk about on the survivor side from Ruby Wolves. We saw the, I think it was the Nia, that full scent on totem number five before we saw the fifth gen pop. Um, and then being able to come in for the team save to really maximize the stages that go out the door. That was... Uh, that was impressive. Yeah, and now Mirage is kind of forced into a position where they have to hope that they can not only match that performance, but also uh, outperform the Ruby Wolves in blood points because matching that performance will result in a tie and then it's going to come down to which team overall has the most blood points across both trials. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> it's it, rough. So, and that was why I kind of had the... Mm, faces legion on suffo is rough yeah legion that was not that was not a kind of map to send that killer to um although i also think there were some interesting gameplay choices made um, yeah i mean we had seen we had seen um some decisions made that maybe i think gave ruby wolves some ability to kind of build a little bit more pressure um, yeah, but kind of understandably so once we kind of got to that point in the game because uh, they did, did a good job of splitting that pressure early. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that was the most optimal build for for Legion in that situation, but I mean, uh, Arrhenius still did. I, I mean, all things considered, Legion is not a strong comp killer. I right, think right, right. For every team to go again, so I think Arrhenius did, you know, the best she could with a not very, not very great options. And I am uh, waiting for a confirmation. Okay, I wanted to make sure I was giving you the right one, uh, and I figured this is probably the case. So Ruby Wool's currently up two to nothing after uh, the first matchup here. Um, so the pressure, like you mentioned, definitely going to be on to Mirage. I mean, hey, this could be the point here where if you're a Mirage, you know, maybe you go up into, uh, Slow Galeo's, uh, play stream over there, you know, throw him something interesting, maybe have him play a killer perkless or something, you know what I'm saying? Uh, make, oh, chase tag and then put him on like a big old map, put him back on suffocation pit or Swamp. something, you know? Um, on or on Swamp, you know, that could be fun too. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of where, um, again, kind of with the, the style with Playstream here, um, mm -hmm. you can kind of, both sides can either help or hurt both sides, yeah. you know? Which is fun for this matchup know. where you know it's like friends versus friends, so. Yeah, supporting supporting your favorite uh, teams in this matchup isn't always giving your favorite team the challenge it might be giving their opponent the challenges to try to make it a little bit more difficult for them which is all part of the fun you know so keep in mind here that the winner of this matchup will be going on to face the winner of our last matchup which was calamity so Calamity is waiting to see who they will be playing literally in the next matchup uh, based off of the results of this trial here. Which will be our game or our set three of the day, correct? Matchup number three of the day, yes. Okay. Or set number three, I guess, too, because they're one set matchups, but yes. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. So, if you were going to be somebody trying to uh, help Mirage out here, what kind of challenge would you throw uh, to Slogaleo, huh. killer-wise? I had brought up Chase Hag on Swamp, but I know there are some really, like, just mean things <laughs> that you could recommend here. Oh, that I can recommend? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Evil Mastermind here. Well, so... Anymore. Here's going to be one rough thing is it, it part of it depends on uh, 
I mean, do you, do, how do you feel about slows Oni, right? Maybe put slow on Oni, have him play no power Oni, put him on a big map. Because uh, one of the big things that usually for Oni is like a big help is, yeah, you struggle in the early part of the game because teams are going to be pre-throwing pallets and preventing you from, you know, acquiring the blood orbs to get into the power itself. But then if you also on top of that make it a no power Oni, um, and put them, you know, again, maybe on a, put them on the game. I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, could be something yeah. that could really help turn some tides. You know, I, I, am not sure if we've had the, you know, the, the killer in the map already picked, but those would be things I would think of. Um, one thing I can't help but wonder, and maybe, uh, we can have somebody on the back end, let us know, um, but do do are, if once a killer's chosen, does anybody who goes in to challenge the killer do they know that the killer's already been chosen and who the killer is? Is that how that works? Um, like if like let's say I'm gonna go in and I want to choose the killer, but the killer has already been chosen. Will it let me know that the next game is going to be this killer, so then I can add some more challenges for the killer? You know what I mean? I don't think it'll tell you what challenges are already completed but i think the killer would immediately decline the challenge so you might be notified that way that like that a killer has already been selected but, but I don't you wouldn't know, know what killer has been selected i guess it would be my, no, my i question. don't i don't okay. think so unless um the the player you know if you were in their stream and they were able to tell you hmm. what they were given true 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 i guess yeah because you would be and their play stream, and then yeah, true, 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 true. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Ooh. We do have a map. Wait, I can't see it though. No, we do have Wait. a map. Uh, we are going to be uh, going to Raccoon City Police Department oh here. If somebody gave Slogaleo a Huntress on RCPD again. Like, did you guys not learn from yesterday? Or did you learn from yesterday, I guess? I mean, the other thing that could be fun, Slow is a uh, notorious um, nemesis. Do you maybe, uh, for the low, th maybe for the lore, bring Nemesis Immersion, in on RCPD? Yeah. You know, really let us immerse uh, for the last part of our matchup here? Maybe, maybe. I would love to see Nemesis on RCPD with the... "Quote unquote for Raccoon City uh, survivors, the Resident Evil chapter survivors. Oh, would we still be allowed to do that? Because I don't think they're allowed to duplicate survivors. No, I don't know. I don't think we could. But it would be really cool. It, it would be really cool. It would be so cool for the lore. Like, come on, Sam. I'm requesting that. I <laughs> But it's also assuming that everyone would have the uh, appropriate setup needed for that. So. Right. True, 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 true. Wishful, wishful thinking. I'm a huge Resident Evil fan, so wishful thinking. I, I uh, map, I you know, I, so I what the more you play on it, it doesn't become as bad. I, I feel like it's a worse version of Hawkins in the sense of like everyone hated Hawkins once you first started playing it. But as you learn the lay of lay, like as you learn the lay of the land and kind of learned where gens tend to spawn and kind of know where the good loops are at on the survivor and killer side, like it doesn't become so bad, honestly. Um, I I still think, and I I believe we had this discussion with um, Doc last night. I still think if you were to look at it, if you're in the main like corridor. You have top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left, and you made four iterations where just one of those is blocked in each iteration, so it knocks the map down in size a little bit. Yeah. But then still over the course of playing all four iterations, because you know, you like bat them, you have, it's the four, it's still the school, it's just different like ways of it. Uh, over the course of the four iterations, you still get to see what the devs did, which is honestly a brilliant job of, inca of capturing the police department from resident yeah. evil 2 it's just i think it's too much of a map with too small of corridors and too many nooks and crannies for dvd to really have like a fun round on you know 
Yeah, the my biggest problem with that map, it, it is a beautiful map, like absolutely beautiful, um, beautifully ported from the remake games, just like a lovely map. It's just so big. It is such a large map, and there are just a lot of like really difficult to navigate areas even if you know the map like if you're in one part of the map sometimes there is only one way out of that part of the map which i think is really frustrating um especially if you're like in that bottom i'm very specifically thinking of like that bottom back area uh on the right side kind of near the interrogation room like there's really there are a couple places where it's like there's really only one way in and out and if you need to get to like the other side even the, just to the, the other like the left hand bottom back side like you've got to go all the way around just to get there and i'm like that's so like frustrating like it's just so much map i do gotta say though um i don't know how much anyone in here has spent time in the basement i always seem to end up hanging out down there a little bit whenever i end up on rcpd um i like the basement design and i also like the uh difference in like the stairs whereas like the bottom f flight is the longer flight and the like the first turns very short I, I don't know i just like the fact that uh even small like i want to say cosmetic designs but it's really map designs but small little changes to that can just kind of change the ambiance of something that we see in every map, you know, which is the basement. Yeah. The variety, the variety there is really nice. I remember making a comment about it yesterday because we were looking at the stairs. I was like, these are very long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the first, the the second st uh, landing is so long. Yeah. But I, th I think well, overall it's about the same time to go from the top, from whatever floor to the to the basement, though. Yeah, I, I think you are correct. Um... And I do like that, like, normally the stairs going into the basement are all, like, the same wood stairs. But in RCPD, it's, like, a, a, an entire corridor of, like, cement stairs. Mm -hmm. Like, the stairwell is also cement. And it just feels like it's very sterile and creepy in its own right. So I do really appreciate just, like, the, like, aesthetic difference. I also, uh, speaking of aesthetic, I love the juicer squad that, um... Ruby Wool is getting ready to pull out here. I love, I really love that Ace shirt. And I really want, like to wear that in real life because it's very much my aesthetic <laughs> love that shirt i love that shirt so i do like this jake outfit but i don't think anything will ever take me away from the 90s baby jake with the um the windbreaker. windbreaker yeah man yes. styling fresh very fresh So RCPD, any thoughts on what we might think the killer linked with this map is going to be? Or who you would like to see on RCPD? I think stealth killers are really fun on this map. And by really fun, I mean I, they fucking suck if you're playing Survivor. But, um, I, and again, just like, yes, you can communicate. You have comms, right? You can communicate where you last saw the killer. But this is such a big map. Mm. This is such a big map that, like, you cannot have eyes in every corner at every time. So... You'd be like, yeah, like, last time I saw them, they were over here, but good luck after that, I guess. So, interesting comment that I just happened to read in the game chat before they readied up here. Slow our killer saying that this will be a killer they have never played before. Okay. Which Still intrigues me. Bless you. Very interesting. Hmm. No worries again, but that's all right. So, do we think someone chose the Omrio? That would be interesting. Because it's the only killer that I can think that somebody like Slow Galeo hasn't played, and it's just because they haven't like gotten the new chapter. So I feel like we saw Slow play a very diverse killer pool. The couple times we see him, seen him in Vigos this year. Yeah. Maybe. Unless he's just Maybe. throwing us a curveball and it actually ends up yeah. being like a nemesis, you know what I mean? So I... Yeah. <laughs> and like, oh, I've never played this killer before. Right, 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 right. right. Nemesis main coming out onto <laughs> RCPD with Nemesis. <laughs> Pretty sussy slow. I don't know what that one. I don't know. I right? luckily we don't I have don't too know. much time to wait and see here. Um, but do keep in mind, Ruby Wolves currently up two to nothing, heading into uh, 
this trial. And this trial will be figuring out who is going to be facing Calamity uh, directly after this trial here. So... All right, let's go ahead and take another trip on back into the oh, fog. No. And this, Doc, was this you? This was your doing, Doc wasn't it, Doc? Bringing in the Trap Daddy here. Trap Daddy, though, is going to be able to get themselves a very early M1 hit onto Arrhenius, the ace, who is now going to be taking Chase into the corrupt side of our map here. Now, we are going to be seeing a few Hex Totems laying around here. This is a pretty interesting build, might I say. Yeah, I'm not uh, not sure how I feel about this build. It is it is very interesting. Um, but that's a rather unfortunate and quick first down. I mean, this is a large map, so that's kind of what Slow wants here. Because uh, he's going to have trouble dealing... Oh, my God. Oh, everyone is just here. We've got fireworks for our first hook. However, we are getting risky here. Now talking about three injured survivors across the board here. Slow going to start trapping up this hook. Going to make it things. Oh, no, actually going for the. Oh, I like this play here. Also making sure nobody no. can drop from right above. Uh, if you're like me and you don't happen to play too, too much trapper, don't worry. I got you. We see the green trap bag down there, which does mean slow started with the additional bear trap, which is why he started with three, has the ability to carry three. Um, but also, we had seen the fastening tools, which allows us to uh, set the speeds or set the traps 50% faster. And it also increases the time for escapes by 25% as well. <gasps> Brilliant. So, because the door was placed, or the trap was placed so far away from the door, we were able to actually just get around it. Uh, uh, oh! Oh! No, stepping in our own trap, unfortunate. Uh, buying our teammate a little bit of time, but not enough to get out of that trap. <gasps> oh, oh, almost got the flashlight. That so would have been close. huge. Hey, you just stepped in that trap, Slow. Oh. You know it's there. Oh, rip. You set the trap, my guy. That's me playing Trapper at any point, though. <laughs> <Be fair. laughs> I do oh, think, though, at this point, Slow knows that he's got a couple people downstairs here, so I like this play. Instead, setting up more so they can't go straight from the downstairs entrance and then patrolling the top side, right? Kind of making it a little difficult for them to figure out which way they need to go, and we do <gasps> find... Oh. oh, no! We do find this, uh, the reset zone for Irini is here, but unfortunately, we are unable to finish that heal, so... This is going to be uh, an unfortunate second hook state for Arrhenius while we still have Spider on the hook in that courtyard. Now, we do have the Corrupt Intervention is off the gen, so our survivors can start attacking them. However, they've got friends that they need to get off of the hook right now. And what that means is if, if there's any progress on those gens currently across the board, the Ruin that is protected by the Undying, is currently going to be regressing those gens 200%, which means even a generator at 99 would regress back to zero in just two minutes. So right now, slow in a whole bunch of control. I don't know why people keep sending slow Galio to uh, our, our CPD. I really, I really don't know why. I mean, who knows? Maybe this is a situation where Slow has the advantage of feeling comfortable in RCPD. And for that reason, we see their fans sending him there, anticipating that the survivors won't be comfortable. I mean, that is kind of part of the thing you can do with the, with the play stream, right? Yeah, absolutely. You can definitely give your favorite killers or survivors the advantage by sending them somewhere you know they're going to be uh, comfortable and it looks like we're going to leave uh, Irvinius hanging out in this corner for a little while. Not really sure. Uh, maybe we're waiting out a decisive strike? Yeah, I wasn't sure if maybe they were just wanting Arrhenius to sit in the corner for a second, think what they've done, think about what they've done. Not exactly sure. Um, but unfortunately, with where that trap was... Yeah, you're going to have to put the survivor down, homeboy. Yeah. <laughs> because you don't have anywhere yeah, to go. Uh, 
That's really unfortunate there. We're not going to be able to make Arrhenius to a hook from where they were down. And maybe that's kind of what, um, that's why Slow left Arrhenius down. We do see there, though, we've got some pallets getting blocked after the M1. So not only do we have Ruin and Undying, but we do have the Blood Favor in play here as well. Good job to get in front. Not sure if we're going to be seeing a uh, dead hard for the pallet, but regardless, here's going to be a down onto Spider, rotating this survivor a little bit closer to the center of the map, which does kind of keep people... Oh, this is an elimination hook. Never mind. Now, though... That will be our first elimination of the game. We do have two generators done. Ooh. Oh. Are we trying to, uh... Oh, no. is like, I know you can't make me do a hook if I go sit over here. Unfortunately, they were trying to go for the disarm. Slow was able to work their way around. It's interesting because we've seen a couple of chases over here. And I feel like if you would have just ran by the press room, you would have been able to see that there's a glowy totem in there. But it hasn't I been... Heard it. Yeah. It hasn't been dealt with just yet. However, our survivors would know that there is um, still Undying on the table. So maybe they're trying to find out where the second totem is. Because Undying... I mean... We did see Slow get a lot of value out of Undying earlier, um, but maybe they're looking for that second totem as well. Unfortunately, oh. with that being their second elimination of the game, oh. it is not time to be looking for totems. It is definitely time to be finishing those generators. Oh. Yeah, if you'll remember, that was definitely Arrhenius' third hook. Um, she was saved only by the fact that Slow could not get to a hook from that press room because of where he Oh, was. yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Arrhenius had a second chance there um, that she bought for herself, but very, very unfortunate and quick uh, elimination there. It's interesting to see after we have pretty well kind of set up the one corner we've got a whole bunch of our traps over there and still set up over there but haven't really tried to rotate any other hooks over there i'm kind of surprised we haven't went to retrieve the traps that way we can set up wherever we're at next like i'm guessing probably part of it is since it's just a 2v1 just try and get to you know across the map find your survivors speed up that process i mean we know that this gen has a whole bunch of progress on it uh slow even still taking the extra time to cut off the one exit here and uh yeah i was gonna say jake i wouldn't throw this god pallet just quite yet i would just go ahead and try and pull this uh killer away if you can yeah there's so much uh distance made here that that would have been a waste of a pallet but uh we are gonna take chase up into this library area where slow is gonna be forced to vault this and give our survivor a little bit of time to get the hell out of the way very nice done yeah, Fruit Loops is going to be able to buy some team maybe for Katrina here. Not sure if maybe Katrina's on another gen across the way trying to get some extra generator pressure. I mean, we've seen them basically say we ain't worried about totems. Um, oh, get stunned, stupid, says Fruit Loops as they're able to make their way around. Plus 10 wood added to the face of Slow. The question is... Where does Jake go from here? We do know that they've got the one entrance is blocked off. I'm actually kind of surprised Slow didn't... Oh, Slow didn't have any more traps. Never mind. Okay, I was going to say, unfortunately, Slow can't really block off anything else. And there are a couple more areas for Fruit Loops to go. Let's see where to go ahead and take the hit there. There's that undying value I was talking about. Um... Katrina is trying to go ahead and use all the time being bought for her to finish another generator there. Uh, now he's got to hope that Fruit Loops can stay on their feet just a little bit longer, but we are going to bloodlust them on this pallet here, so... Yeah, and that's going to be huge because, of course, with Blood Favor still being up, no worries as far as the pallet save from either of these here. Now going to be slow, seeing slow rotating this survivor to that basement that we were talking about. Look at this thing. This thing is honestly so beautiful. Uh, also, I really That's like the nice stairway. Basement. Yeah. yeah, I really do enjoy like the sterile horror of a cement stairway. Um, and once again, uh, fortunately for Katrina, maybe maybe not fortunately for Slow, but fortunately for Katrina, Slow had no traps to go ahead and set up in that basement area. So um, he's going to have to go and collect some. But uh, in that pursuit, we are going to find Katrina over here. So 
This is gonna be really tricky to try and get the rotation over, maybe to... Never mind, I was gonna say to try to get them out of the basement. Of course, it looks like we are gonna see, um, I, I don't know if that was a timer running out or if we had given up on the hook to try. Okay, yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought, yeah. It looks like we're gonna try to get Katrina the escape here. Ooh. Oh, uh, well, imagine, I think Katrina came down, saw the uh, block on the, you saw, kind of saw the block, and was just like, oh, well, yeah. I'm just gonna lay here. down right here, I guess, that's fine. And that's unfortunate because that's a fresh hook for Katrina. If uh, Fruit Loop had been able to hold on for a second, we might have been able to see. I don't know if Katrina had deliverance or what, but might have been a missed opportunity there. Yeah, I'm not sure what resolution y'all are watching this in chat, though, but that does indeed look like a 4K to me trapper on RCPD. That should probably be... Um, Ruby Wolves, moving on. I will make sure that we um, get a confirmation from our scorekeepers in the back for sure. Um, but I, I believe that will be uh, us seeing Ruby Wolves now moving on to face Calamity here in the third round of our losers bracket to see uh, who will be lined up and waiting for the loser of the Frozo Pub Stop Purs, uh, which is going to be after this next matchup. I really, uh... I'm not pronouncing it other, any other way, just by, for the record. Wait, wait which one? St stop and purse? I'm not pronouncing oh, it any other way. I, I can't. I already have a stutter, so it's really hard to say it that way. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it to you. Um, I got to say, though, guys, you really got to stop setting slow to uh, RCPD, because that is his second 4K on that map in this tourney. Again, we don't know. I mean, for all we know, Ruby Wolves are getting in there and they're sending him there on purpose. Remember, the whole thing with the challenge is not only can you be challenging the other team, but you could be giving... I mean, you could be like, hey, you know what? I want to see Nurse on Colt Tower and put it in those two things for your own killer. I mean, setting things in their favor, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely a possibility that that is what is happening here. Um, I'm just saying, like... If anyone wants a chance, you can't you can't keep putting slow on uh on RCPD. I do you know, okay, I know you said you did, you like that Jake outfit. I actually hate it so much. I by the way. so by the way, while we got a uh, official score coming across, it is five to nothing for Ruby Wolves, which I think that actually score wise is our biggest difference thus far through the tournament. So honestly, really impressive showing um, by Ruby Wolves in that matchup. It's going to be Ruby Wolves versus Calamity here next. And um, I don't know who... I mean, I mean, I, 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 I kind of felt like Calamity had some momentum from beating... From that one, they had a very impressive uh, first round losers bracket game against... Jester line and then took down rebels who looked pretty impressive even in their loss against the pub stompers um, but With them having to go against Ruby wolves who just had a Really impressive performance. I don't I don't know who I would like have as the quote-unquote favorite Yeah, this is a this is definitely a difficult one But what I do appreciate about that is that um, we're gonna be in for a really good game. I feel like yeah, I think this. I think this is gonna be a a, a goodie for sure. Um, and again, this is going to be to figure out who is waiting for the loser of Frozone and Pub Stop and Purse. Um, and now that we are officially through the second round of losers bracket, worth mentioning, you know, getting close to that six fifty mark as far as a challenge. I actually think that was before last one, so we might even already be at that six fifty. But uh, getting close to the seven hundred, so we appreciate everyone for uh, challenging our players, which not only puts a little bit of coin in our convicts pockets, but also um, you know contributes towards that prize pool up there in the top right hand corner since playstream is matching that here with us as partners so y'all are that that's huge yeah, definitely helping contribute to our prize pool for this upcoming season which again as we talked about earlier is set up to be one hell of a season already we're going to be starting our qualifiers for that soon um but yeah thank you guys so much for all of your help and support even just coming out and hanging out with us today um watching and cheering on our favorite teams, your favorite teams and players. Um, 
It's been a really good two days so far. We've had a lot of really fun games. All right, so I would imagine they're probably lining up real quick to do a coin flip, see who's killing first. That way we know uh, as far as all that. Normally, obviously, we have kind of some time, so we normally know that. Um, but it kind of makes sense for a team who is, you know, at this point is going to be winning two matchups, right? Their second round game and their third round game. It's only fair that they get a break before... Uh, playing another game in a row so that's why we're gonna be having that that winner's bracket round first and of course also that the winner's bracket um we kind of need to know that game before uh going into this one so and also in case anyone is wondering well why are they having to play two games in a row and we're not just moving into our winner's bracket game um essentially what that would do would be whoever is uh would lose in the winner's bracket game would have to then play twice, which kind of takes the advantage away from being in the winner's bracket. Just so we're all kind of clear there. Also, I and see guys, like two minutes ago. Uh, well, now they asked, but it's going to be like two minutes ago when we get to the, the stream because of the delay. Uh, they're asking, did you get some good sleep, Shep? Um, I slept for a time. <laughs> I didn't go to the grocery store, so, you know, I slept for a little bit. And I do see somebody, uh, two minutes ago is when you guys will hear me say this, but um, <clears throat> I did see uh, somebody go ahead and type exclamation mark rules in the chat. You guys can go ahead and check that out if you want to see what our brackets are looking at, are, are looking like, who's going to be playing when, um, as well as the rules for how we are scoring this. Um, excuse me, wow. How the games are working. <laughs> It's, I've been drinking uh, Monster Baby. I'm drinking a lot of Monster. Um, also, you will also see in chat those links to go ahead and throw some challenges to our killers and survivors for this next matchup. So while we're getting everyone kind of set up and situated, you guys can go ahead and uh, get those challenges in now so that our setup time for that is a little bit shorter. Yep, so that lets us know that Calamity will be on the killer side first. We will be seeing the Ruby Wolves on the survivor side first. Um, gonna be interesting. Does mean that you've got some, uh, like you said, got some time to start setting us, getting us set up. I mean, I don't know. We've seen Ruby Wolves on the killer side of RPD. Do, do you think you would risk sending them on the survivor side? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I guess it really depends. Oh, I'm frozen again. I guess it really depends on... Um... I'm not saying that to harass you about it, by the way. I'm just letting I everyone know. know <laughs> like that. Yeah, I'm not harassing... If anyone hears me say, oh, oh, I'm frozen, it's so that chat knows that we are aware of it, so that no one's like, oh, Shep's frozen. Shep's frozen! Yeah, I'll like, tell you what, though. Once we get the fourth monitor, oh, we'll be go. We'll be good to go. All right, so I see I got oh. Dabs. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, sent me a friend request. There's the invite. You might have Shep frozen for a second here because I'm going to be tabbing in. Smile. All right, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and invite. Where is Slow at? All right, and there we go. We'll get Slow in here. By the way, you can always tell when I've been doing shenanigans things because I log in and there's my jingle tweet just for future reference. It's when you know shenanigans have been had. Well, at least when it's Jingle Dweet and it's not like, you know, winter time. Because once Halloween hits, Jingle Dweet has to be played like all day, every day. It's just kind of the rules, you know? You know what? Jingle Dweet, Jingle Dweet could be played every day of the year. It would be fine. I love, I love seeing that skin in Survivor games, like when I'm playing pubs. And just hearing the little jingle, jingle, jingle. Yeah. Like, as he's running up, I'm like, this is great. I don't even care if I die. <laughs> like, this is great. I am hoping this year we see um, some new fun co cosmetics. I know they've done a pretty good job at this point by getting most of the survivors, like, ugly sweaters. But I would love to see some actual, like, because, you know, Dwight's got both the jingle tweet and the, like, Dwight in a box. I would love to see some other, like, fun cosmetics like that for survivors. 
Yeah, you know, Claudette's got, um, she's got a really cute holiday outfit. I love the onesies, the holiday onesies that Elodie and um, Zarina have. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see more of those. Um, some more really fun holiday outfits. I'm surprised, honestly, I'm surprised we haven't gotten like a Mrs. Claus outfit for Kate, considering that uh, Clown has a Santa Claus outfit. True though. True. Since they came out together. The Santa you Clown know, is probably one of my favorite clown outfits. Other than the fact okay. that every time uh little man sees the Mr. Puddle's outfit, he calls him Bing Bong from Inside Out, so that technically has Aww. to be my favorite. <laughs> okay, wait, but Mr. Puddles is the best clown outfit. I I, I did want to say uh Santa Santa Clown comes second to Mr. Puddles. I love the mascot outfits, like uh the Robbie the Rabbit. Legion, mm-hmm. um, the Mr. Puddles, Krampus exists. No, Krampus really is fun. Outfit, but... I, um, I don't know. So while we have a second here, because I'm sure it's going to take a minute to get everything situated. Also, by the way, we've got the links over in chat. Go challenge them, chat. Go help them, you know, send them some uh, challenges over their way. Um, My favorite map, you guys. That we haven't been on is Ormond. Ooh. So we would need some inspiration. Ormond Actually, my favorite fun. map is Dead Dog, but I am always a fan of Dead Dog. We have been I there, love Dead Dog. but I like Dead Dog because it gives you that nice balance back and forth. Like it's pretty good for the survivors because everything's kind of close together, but it's also good for the killer because everything's kind of close together. Um, Shack yeah. isn't as strong because you can break the one breakable door, but you know main building's pretty strong. Main, e- even yeah, if, main is a headache. Yeah. yeah. You have that like row of buildings along the side that can be really gnarly until you get all those resources taken care of, and then you get the resources taken care of, and you're just walking down hallways pretty much. I see Kate's comment. DVD hates Kate, and eighty percent of her skins yeah, are ugly. No. AF. I understand. I, I feel that. Even you know her. Um. All right. So anyone who plays this game knows. We all know that the fashion is like the real end game of DVD. Mm-hmm. Um, gotta get the drip. I gotta say, some of these skins, okay, okay, some of these skins, some of y'all, I swear to God, are on some mission to find the ugliest outfits that I've ever seen. Like, I've seen some awful, awful combinations out there. Or even just the game gives us some really bad stuff. Like, I really hate the Jake, like, Prime skin. It's So ugly. Are you are you ready to hear what we've got going on here? We've actually already got our killer in our map picked for the next two trials. So for this uh, oh, do we? matchup here, and it's going to be a mirror match. A mirror match? Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. Do you want to wait and see where the mirror match is and who it's with until we log in, until we sign in here? I, yeah, I think I think because it is going to be our mirror match, so we're going to spoil it for the second game after this. I don't want to say what it's going to be. I want to be surprised for the first one. That's fair. I'm not even looking. I'm not even looking at game chat like or our uh, our background chat to to check anything. Oh, rickety r- Oh, I guess I can at least let them know in chat. I was going to say I switched over, but I'll let them know that they are uh, good to go here. Good luck. Have fun. And uh, this is crazy, though, because so this nurse on Cold Tower, remember that Calamity in the first round of the loser's bracket had an absolutely nutso nurse performance on Cold Tower. Can we see who we're gonna tell them? I did. I... <laughs> Fuck. Well, whatever. We're going to nurse on Cold Tower. Deal with it, chat. <laughs> it's okay. No, it's good. It's good. Okay. Well, we can talk about it. I didn't. I actually didn't know what it was either. I didn't know what it was. So. So. uh... We get to have us more of a. I don't want to say a typical comp match because we don't know what other. Um, challenges have been thrown their way uh whether it be you know like kind of like we had seen before where a survivor can't touch an exit or uh you know maybe so we'll see some no mithers come out 
It's been a while since we've seen the no mither challenge, whether it be a single player or an entire team, but that could be fun. Yeah. I think the last time we saw, well, no, not the last time, but I know Slow, uh, I think, gave himself a singular no mither challenge. Yeah. At some point, because he just wanted to play no mither. Like, Slow, you could have just put it on, honestly. Shred only demo. Imagine. That could Please, be fun, though. I am, uh... I'm a shred only demo believer. I can tell that we're at the point in the the delay where I, I just accidentally uh, gave away who the killer in the. the <laughs> <laughs> I love I love the delay because I get to see the reactions late, and I'm kind of just looking. Like I always have the stream because I also like to like kind of help mod the chat mm -hmm. when we're uh, doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> So I love the delay because I love getting to see everyone's reactions later when we've already moved on. <laughs> so yeah, again, we're going to Nurse on Cold Tower. Calamity, had, again, though, had a very, very impressive Nurse performance against Jesterline. Um, oh, that was a brutal game. Like 4K at like 4 gens up. Like, talking about... Listen, I'm sorry, chat, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> um... I can't apologize anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? You don't have to, Q. It's okay. They can crab on it if they want to. <laughs> um, so that does mean that Ruby Wolves probably at least has an idea of what they're going against. I'll be interested to see if Slow um, is the one that plays the nurse for them in the uh, mirror match. Because Slow's kind of run killer for them throughout the tournament thus far here. Um, don't know if maybe they have a spicy nurse main laying in the shadows, possibly. Someone who, once they saw Nurse, was like, I need to do this. Yeah, yeah. Please give to me. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, indeed. And, um, I don't know. Hmm. It does, um, it does mean that we we no longer have that debate as far as the question of where are we going and stuff for the next two. But now... Don't ask us. Yeah, right. Don't ask us. We've already found out. Also, again, chat, since it's been a little while, if you guys are curious as far as how we're scoring things different, um, it's in rules. The scoring is a little bit different than usual. Um... Because it is different here. Because it's it's all more based around the play stream aspect. Like that's the whole part of it here. Like right, we've been seeing a whole bunch of fun. I mean, we just saw Trapper on RCPD. Uh, you get to throw a whole bunch of curveballs at our squads here. Um, and so because of that, we didn't want to make kind of the traditional like three two or the two two three scoring that we see with the hooks during the Vigos court. Um, and the same restrictions and things because we it would be tough if like one person had a whole bunch of challenges and they're completing those challenges and then because of that their their score suffers. So that's why we kind of have some of the other things on based off of who's completing the most scores, eliminations versus kills, stuff like that. So uh, feel free to check that out uh, if you are wanting to uh, see what the scoring is like during the actual uh, event. Also, I see that our Discord is over in chat. If you guys aren't a part of the Discord, it's the best place to kind of keep up on news uh, and things like that going on in Vigo's court, especially since we are getting close to season uh, number three start time. So, And speaking of our Discord, I'm just going to shamelessly plug the rest of our social media as well, especially as we start picking up our next season. Um... We do have a YouTube, we do have a Twitter, our YouTube, uh, we have been posting all of our games there, so if you want to see previous matches or, you know, catch, if you miss matches during our season, you can find them at our YouTube. We have shorts getting uploaded, um, as we get the content for them, um, and then you can follow our Twitter for updates, um... Wow, I'm just getting all of the flattering freezes on. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's not your <laughs> fault. Like, it just it changed again, and I was like, "That's so pretty." <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you can follow our Twitter. It's the same thing, Vigo's Court. Um, you will get updates on 
when our games will be happening. We also have a Facebook and an Instagram under all the same, all of the same name, where you can find all that information. <laughs> but our Twitter and our YouTube are kind of like the most active. So, you know, go do the YouTube out. things. You know what I mean? Like when the videos come up, watch them, like them, share them, make sure you're subscribed. You know, all that stuff. And again, if you guys missed last season, that's a great place to go and check out what it was like last season. Maybe if you guys are interested in seeing if you've never played before in Vigo's Court or if you are interested in playing in future Vigo's Courts events, that's where you can kind of check out how things work um, or how previous matches have gone. Yeah, lots of, lots of good information on the YouTube. And again, that is Vigo's Court for all of our other social medias. So this is going to be the first trial of the third round in the loser's bracket here. We're going to be seeing the Ruby Wolves on the survivor side first. Calamity on the killer first. As we've already talked about, going to be seeing dabs coming out here on the nurse. Cold Tower. I do hear that part of our delay is we're still getting some challenges in for our two squads here. So uh, I'm going to be interested to see what other... Tr um, side objectives and things need to be complete yeah, i'm definitely excited to see hearing that i'm definitely excited to see what we are in for <laughs> this next challenge knowing that it's nurse on coal tower i'm very interested to see what happens here i want some spicy firecracker plays putting this out there right now spicy firecracker plays is what you're asking for yes yes please interesting I love I love using firecrackers though because uh, I've got like I usually play on really high ping so I'll get blinds from anywhere. I'm trying to just get a quick check, uh, make sure we're having our uh, challenges getting completed in the background. Cause I don't think I remember seeing that bar move. I want to make sure we've got a good up to date uh, total prize pool for you guys because that is another cool thing as far as with play stream matching dollar for dollar as far as for the prize pool it means it's a growing prize pool for our survivor or for our competitors here based off of how many challenges you throw their way which is honestly really cool mm -hmm. definitely a uh, fun and interactive way for you guys to get uh, involved instead of you know just hanging out with us in chat you can go ahead and influence the games themselves as well as actively participate and contribute to our next season in um, you know bigger ways of course your viewership is much appreciated and you know we love that you guys give us your time but if you were ever looking for more of a way to help out me go all right, don't see any Mori, unfortunately. We do see the cut coin in that slot there. Getting ready to start off again. Going to be seeing Ruby Wolves on the survivor side. And uh, Ruby Wolves just had, I mean, honestly, dare I say, um, the most impressive performance I think I've seen as far as for a particular round yet with the 5-0. Um, I got a question, though, for you, Shep. If there was... If there was like ASMR streaming, would it be like if I was just to talk about and just kind of get into the mic like this and talk about taking yeah, another yeah. trip on back into the fog here? Also, I am getting news from our producers in the background that our bar is broken uh, for the uh, pool. So we will try and get you an update. But we do see the three gen is on top here on the top of the cold tower. We've got the corrupt intervention. We see dabs out on the nurse so uh, really should i also be doing it I, like I feel like i'm suddenly being too loud uh but we do see scratch marks so we're going to be able to start our first chase pretty early on here and we did see a really impressive performance i believe from dabs yesterday so um i'm looking forward to another good performance here is that a chase music starting is that a spectator bug what's that is it like a spectator bug where there's no like music? Oh yeah, that I mean, you know, I, I know it's hard to believe, but like you know, bugs in my dead by daylight. Um, but yeah, sometimes 
It happens. So it does look like here, uh, we've already got ourselves a very quick um, first hook. Trying to put pressure onto this generator over here. They weren't going to be able to get it done in time. So that does mean that that is going to be a pop goes the weasel. 25% regression. Now we found tags onto the back of two survivors. We have two people here that could potentially be getting put onto the ground. Oh yeah, really disgusting and precise blinks from Dodds here. Oof, and that will be our second down with a survivor still on the hook in the back. That's now going to be... This is tough here because now we're talking about a hook right in the middle of the map, a hook on the back side of main here. We saw a missed skill check over here as well at the 3 o'clock position. Kind of surprised to see Dabs not going over there first, knowing that that generator had a whole lot of progress on it. It's going to be a tough game for our... Ooh. For our Ruby Wolves here, uh... We do see that first unhook coming in, but our second hook in the back here has progressed, and we haven't seen a generator be completed just yet. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this this is kind of the type of performance that we had seen. I think it was Dabs who had came out for um, Calamity yesterday in that game against Jester Line, and just, I mean, really had control in a similar fashion. On Two hooks back-to-back -back on the backside of main here. Uh, now we're going to be looking at four injured survivors across the board. Generator number one now getting complete. Oh, not going to be able to cut off our Nancy just in time. So we all will be seeing slow, able to double back. Now more towards the back, uh, the back corner over here and able to make some distance, able to cut off the line of sight as well, which makes it a little bit harder for the nurse. Now going to be seeing one blink, going to be seeing a second. Now slow, though, down onto the ground. And Slow did progress the second stage there. Unfortunately, no DS. I think it has been uh, a little too long for that. So that is our first elimination with only one. I got his music play. back. Oh, thank God. I was going to say, it was really, like, unsettling to not <laughs> have the music. So I was like, this feels really awkward. <laughs> Do hear that this generator up at the 11 position doesn't have too, too much progress. Able to find the Claudette back here as well. This is going to be big. Able to get the tag and the down over here. Going to be next to a generator only. Again, keeping in mind only one generator complete thus far. And this is now hook stage number five. This is a... Is the music gone again? I hate this. This is a really tough game. We do see that second generator getting completed there. So the Ruby Wolves doing their best to try to uh, combat all this pressure. We do see Deadlock off in the distance in that top corner. So we kind of have an idea of where our survivors could be. Well, we know that one of them's over here. We saw a very fast unhook coming in here. And, uh, you know, we got some extra slowdown in the middle portion of the game when we had all those survivors injured because we had Thananophobia. I mean, a couple times we had four stacks for quite a bit here. We do see Dan jumping on into the locker here. And Dan says, he says, drop it. Slaps him with the D. That's going to be some distance build here. That's some time for our survivors to maybe be able to crush out some very costly points because of course also crushing out those gens buys you or get, earns you some very precious blood points yeah those blood points are going to be super super important um especially if we end up since we are getting mirror matches if they're able to get the same uh results as each other then it's going to really come down to those blood points at the end there all right we are going to see here Getting the kick. That's going to be a pop goes the weasel. Yeah, there's some scratch marks back here. That's going to be a Claudette. I know sometimes you feel like you blend in, but not when there's scratch marks around, my friend. That's going to be an M1 on to F here. F now going to be trying to move probably more back towards main, I would imagine. Actually working around the backside of this jungle gym. Nice dead hard, though, in order to avoid the M1. Now going to be moving into our TNL here. TNL, of course, doesn't really do too, too much against the nurse 
Got a little bit of a body burn. Not enough, though. You were still too close. And uh, F's in the chat. That's going to be a down on the Claudette. We do hear this generator next to us has a little bit of progress on it. Uh, but it looks like we're not going to bother with worrying about it right now. We're going to go ahead and start looking around, checking this back generator over here. Not a lot of progress on it, though. Yeah, we see that trying to monitor a couple of gens. Went ahead and applied the pop, goes the weasel to this one right here. I can't help but wonder if maybe we do see, yeah, a survivor up on this generator at the one o'clock position. That one is going to get complete. There is the Nia. Nice one blink in order to get the M1 here. We will, of course, have a little bit of distance made up thanks to the speed boost. One blink. Going to be able to get the down, not oh, before God. the save, though. However, this does put an injured survivor right in front of Dabs, and unfortunately, there was no BT there, so we will see both survivors down. All right, and there we are going to see a little bit of the 360s. Uh, no, 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 just a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let it help out the casters here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to... I got sick. <laughs> Thank you. Very unfortunate. And of course, we do have a chance for someone to still have a deliverance here, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Unfortunate. Hey, you know, I, I'm seeing some ideas coming up for um, some ideas for some caster challenges. Also, by the way, 4K at 3 gens, really impressive performance, quite honestly, that here is, from Calamity. Yeah. Uh, worth mentioning, really, really good performance. So the pressure really going to be on the Ruby Wolves uh, to really be able to come out and match that pace when it comes to our next trial. We do know that we're having mirror matches of Nurse, which makes me wonder if that was due to cold tower being selected in an agreement between our teams right because cold tower is kind of normally our uh default map so i would imagine to guarantee the mirror matches would have required uh the the cold tower being played which is huge you will also notice uh, up in that top right hand corner um the bar has not moved we are aware of that i want you to know that we are uh moving along as far as in our progress i'm trying to get a guaranteed update on that we all are the sponsors themselves also know so we're kind of trying to work to be able to get you an updated bar up there uh we're trying to get that uh figured out for y'all oh yeah but to my question for you um shep so mm -hmm. they're talking about over over here. I don't know if you see all of the shenanigans going down. Um, they're talking about different challenges that they could even offer for the casters for a future tournament. And I was thinking about this. What would be your thoughts of having to do some shout casting while like having like warheads in the mouth because they're like soured and they'd be like kind of hard to do or maybe having to do like shots of hot sauce before a round or something like that that could be fun sure no <laughs> no i'd do them i mean i'm like okay i've got a pretty like high tolerance for like heat like I, I eat a lot of spicy food so i don't know if taking shots of hot sauce would really do anything to me so this is why we'd have to make sure that it's like I mean, a good hot sauce. We're not going to go, like, get Louisiana hot sauce and take shots of it. Because that's not going to really affect you nor me. Because um, I'm a big spice head. If anyone's been, yeah, through, yeah. If anyone's been through the stream in the past, you know, y'all know we do spicy challenges over on my side of the of the world. But, um... Chef has to be at a higher <laughs> decibel than Q challenge. I don't think I could ever. Yeah, I'm not a very loud person. <laughs> one or one, one v one or sup? No, I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, pass on that, Dazzy. I don't. I don't need to be embarrassed here in front of viewers. You know what I'm saying? If I'm gonna do that, <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna be while I'm streaming, not 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 at the uh, um, will of the of uh, Vigo's court. You know what I mean? Y'all are gonna have to work for that a little bit. Um, I'd be down to do some uh, some fun caster challenges. I'm not doing jumping jacks. So you got me fucked up. Um, however, we, we have talked yesterday in the past, um, you know, we all know that Q has the smallest bladder on Twitch, so I'm gonna go do that Q thing real quick while we get these lobbies set up, and because of that, that will require us to do a, uh, really quick be right back, alright? So, catch y'all in a few, peace!
All right, welcome back, Vigo's Court. Thank you for allowing us that short break while we figured out some uh, stuffs going on in the back. Unfortunately, it looks like because of a scheduling conflict, Calamity's Survivor Squad is unable to make it to the match. So, um, it looks like they are going to have to forfeit. Unfortunately, we'll not be able to see the Ruby Wolves come out with that mirror match nurse on cold tower um but that does mean that the ruby wolves will be moving on that is tough pierre so that means now at this point and that's tough especially af after like that last one like uh that that last i mean, I mean calamity had a very strong killer game to start yeah, things a off very strong performance so very unfortunate that they're gonna have to um have that and then still walk away from it right so, so because of that we are ahead of schedule quite a bit here um and we're not able to move up chat we're gonna be right back All right, y'all. So we are back. Okay. You're going to see. I'm in a lobby by myself. Um, I mean, there are rules that we want to make sure that we're sticking by as far as for um, 
competitive integrity here. Um, you know, you have a certain amount of time to report. That time had passed. Uh, so this is going to be Ruby Wolves moving on as far as in the loser's bracket. Uh, in order to figure out who they are going to be facing off against, we have to wait for the 4 o'clock game. And since we are so far ahead of schedule here, uh, what we're going to be doing is taking a very quick break. That also gives our team in the background some time to look as far as what's going on with that box up there in the top, top whatever way it is, top right. Um, right, yes, yeah, top right. So keep an eye out as far as uh, in your notification notifications if y'all haven't turned the notifications all on down there when y'all smack the follow button we will be going back live before that four o'clock game uh, but that gives us a couple minutes here to kind of look into some things while we're offline here all right so uh, we will be back at four o'clock again for our winners bracket round number three here between frozo and pub stop purse uh, and the loser of that will then be facing off against ruby wolves all right um that sound good ship Sounds good to me. All right, we'll catch y'all back here in about 30 minutes, all right? Peace. Be right back, guys. <laughs>